Emergency Station. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Garth Network. I'm Eric. And I'm Matt. And today we are celebrating the 40th anniversary of My Bloody Valentine. Uh, and we've got a ton of guests to uh, announce for today's very special episode. I'm going to let Matt go ahead and get rolling with that. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. 40 years ago this week in America, My Bloody Valentine hit the big screen. And today we are doing our biggest celebration that we can during COVID times. And I am, and we are very honored and excited to have the cast and director of My Bloody Valentine. We've got Jim. Say hi, Jim. Hello there. Jim. <laughs> we got <laughs> Harry Ward himself. Liam, Peter, say hi. Hey, how's everybody doing? We got Aline who played Sylvia. Hello. We got director George Milhalka. Hello. <laughs> we got Tom Kovex played Mike. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. Neil, how you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. Hi, everyone. And we got Mr. Rob Stein, aka Sam Roberts. Ooh. Hey, y'all. Hey, well, <laughs> welcome, guys. This is this has been such a fun show to get put together. You guys are just so awesome. And and from the minute we started putting this together, I knew we were going to have a great time. And this is one I know a lot of folks are looking forward to. And we want to talk all about My Bloody Valentine, what the experience was, um, how you got started. It's, it's 40 years. I mean, who would have thought 40 years ago making, making a little movie would have, would have blown up and lasted this long? Yeah. I mean. Not yep. us. <laughs> we were just trying to pay the rent. That's it. exactly it. I was just trying to make a big movie for the first time in my life. <laughs> and you did, although it took 30 years for people to figure it out. <laughs> well, why don't uh, maybe George, why don't you talk about how this uh how my bloody Valentine started as a project. I understand that a lot of the cast and crew also worked on uh, Pickup Summer just prior to this. Is that what we're calling it yeah. still? <laughs> <laughs> or we're calling it Pickup Summer, not Pinball Summer. It, it, the original Canadian title was Pinup Summer. Mm -hmm. or Pinball <laughs> Summer. Pinball Summer. Oh. But anyway, what happened was uh, I did Pinball Summer and uh, um, it, um, uh, it did very well on the international market and it did very well on the, um, the American, uh, in the American market, especially in drive-ins. So the producers of, uh, um, of, um, um, oh, oh. George Hello. is actually George is actually coming to us from way Eastern Europe. So, uh -huh. uh, so yeah. George, where is he in Budapest? Budapest, yeah, I right. think. Yeah, yep. right. looks like so. he's trying to come back. Yeah, so we'll get George back in here. Uh, Did anyone else work on that? Who else worked yeah. on that? Yeah. I'm back. I did. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Tom. Tom was on. Tom was on. There he is. Tom was, Ellen was, and I was. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Pinball Summer, yes. Yeah. Go yeah. on, George. Yeah. So anyway, the producers got asked me if I wanted to do a, a two-picture deal with them. And the first one, because I just made a big hit with a comedy, was going to be a comedy. Um, we had a little bit of a drug problem with our, with our writers on that comedy, and the guy delivered an 800-page script. <laughs> and the producer said, Fuck me, be able to read this script by the time we're supposed to finish shooting it. So how would you like to do your picture first? And I said, you know, I just need a job. I'd be happy to do that. And he says, you know, it's going to be a horror film. And I said, I've never made a horror film. And he said, you never made a comedy before you made a comedy. You know, <laughs> so I said, OK. So get so he gave me a one page description of the story outline. And he said, Paramount is interested. We can make it happen. Um, but the only problem you have is you have to come up with a screenplay. 
You have to make it and shoot it, and it's got to be ready. This was in August of uh, twenty uh, of uh, nineteen eighty, but it's got to be ready for brought for uh, theatrical release in twelve hundred theaters in the U.S. at in February of twenty of, of eighteen uh, of nineteen um, nineteen eighty one. And, you know, that was like six months away, seven months away. And I said, of course, we can make that, that happen, even though knowing full well that it's almost fucking impossible. Anyway, <laughs> um, we, um, I said, yeah, I'm going to do it. So we hired uh, um, a writer from Los Angeles, John Baird, to do the um, to do the script. And while we worked on an outline, I was already busy looking at um uh, locations and casting. I cast the most of the show from the outline, and obviously, you know, I'm very loyal. And the people who worked well with me on the previous shows, I gave them all a job on this one, obviously, because that would just make my life a lot easier. I knew them, and they were good actors. You know, um, mm-hmm. then then basically we we ran the show. Um, we shot it in uh, in September and October, really fast. Uh, by middle of November, we were finished with it, and then we had to do a a, a crazy twenty four hour a day, seven day a week post production to get it ready for um, um, the release on on the thirteenth. Obviously, a few things happened in between. Early January, we got totally censored by the MPAA where we were told, tell those Canadians to take their movie and go home. And uh, most of the most of the show um, got censored badly to the point, you know, we, we were basically working on the most um, state of the art special. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> Play-of-the-art special effects. <laughs> well, that's, well, I can pass that on to the rest of you. I mean, obviously, this was a very bloody film with, uh, you know, grandiose special effects. I mean, how was it, A, to work with such, you know, uh, special effects set pieces, but also then to see the final product and find that it had been completely removed? Well, I, I was, I, I had an incredible experience. Put out all the yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, anyway, so you know, once we got censored, we had to, this was early January, and we had to redo the whole show while we were mixing, while we were cutting negative, and finally we got it out in time. And then obviously, uh, you know, like I always said, you know, it was my bloody Valentine, but it was the most anemic Valentine possible because everything <laughs> we spent money on disappeared. Yeah. But for some reason or another, because of the great cast I had and because of the great story John Bear wrote, it still worked, even without the um, even without the, the explicit gore. And uh, you know, I mean, it's just been fabulous. <laughs> Knowing that over the years, its uh, its credibility has grown um, to the, where now it's being considered one of the top ever horror films in the world. So, and I can thank all these wonderful people next to me for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and he's gone. He's gone again. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> they speak him here. They see my part's him gone. Here. Yeah, let's, uh, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> the, Berman, the Berman brothers, I think. The Berman, I think that, that those were the special effects people. Was it the Berman the Bermans, brothers? Yeah. That's the Berman Berman Studios. Berman Studios, yeah, in Los Angeles. I only mention it because it was my first time coming i had to i had to fly to los angeles to uh, get my um body made and uh and and uh, i walked into that studio and found out that the day before i was there they had been doing david bowie for the man who fell to earth no way i was just in heaven i just thought i've made it <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool. 
Yeah. That was the make- time you almost met David Bowie. That's right. One, just missed by a day. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> I seem to be getting kicked off all the time. <laughs> <laughs> The iconic George Mahalka. George, George, it was the Berman Brothers, yeah? The, the special effect? Yeah, it was it was yeah, it was Tom Berman that, that did the all the uh, the effects, yes. And was were was the cast, were you aware that all of that had been trimmed, all of your you know, your gory death scenes were gonna or was that a surprise when you when you saw the final product? Well, let me jump in on this because I was completely unaware of the battle and the struggle that George and the Montreal producers, um, all the folks who really made the film, had to undergo with uh, the censorship board in L.A. It was, you know, I, I did the work on the film. It took about two months. Um, and... Um, it took about two months, and I went on my merry way, got into other forms of trouble. Uh, but it was only years later that I found out uh, the, the, uh, the kind of guerrilla warfare George and the producers and the Montreal folks had to wage on behalf of the film to get it done and get it near the censorship. It was a completely new story to me when I finally heard about it. And I don't know, frankly, I don't know where you guys summoned the energy to do that coming off the, the film shoot and everything else. The go mano a mano. Oh, he's gone again. Go mano a mano with uh, the censorship folks. It, uh, it must have taken old fashioned gumption, I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. Liam, well, as, I mean, as we're talking special effects, Liam, what was your favorite? effect to have worked on and was it carried through the whole way or was it one of those that got cut that you finally got to see restored years later well one and two like helen and and, um are seen then through the uh, changing rooms up into the shower that was uh that was a lot of hard work (laughs) yeah (laughs) i don't get it peter and kudos to helen because uh you know that was a, a hard day um and then to see, you know, on film, the fruition was depleted. You know, our slasher film got slashed. <laughs> and then the second film, uh, excuse me, the second scene that I loved the most and that took the longest to create was with Tom in the utility uh, room doing his love scene. That was a beautifully filmed and piece of art, really. And that just went on to the cutting room floor and never made it back up into the screen. So that was very, very depressing. Peter, from what I understand, that scene never was fully restored. Apparently, I think, Rob, you might have mentioned something about it where there was blood or where the two couples, there was blood going into each other's mouth at the end of that scene. Uh, I, I, no, I don't think I, I know what you're talking about mm-hmm. where Tom is on top of uh, Harriet and they get skewered and and blood from him drips into her mouth. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I Rob totally... and I'll recreate it for you right now. <laughs> 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 to get off all the time. I know. But... Don't worry, George. We'll keep bringing you back on. We appreciate you. <laughs> but uh, maintaining you know, I, the good fight. <laughs> I remember, you know, being behind a mask is kind of like doing Commedia dell'arte, Italian high clown work, and. You know, I can stand over in the corner and watch a beautifully constructed scene like that. And I was like, man, I'm in the real deal here. This is art and the progress. And yeah. to to lose that on film forever was, you know, I really felt for Tom. Uh, you know, that was, uh, it should never have happened. It was uh, upsetting for sure. Maybe George would like to speak to that. Nope. Oh, I think he's frozen. Nope. He's crying. <laughs> yeah. He's crying. I, 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 I can, it's a little emotional for George right now. He's crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I could jump in for a second, I just wanted to say that um, the thing that blew me away was how freaking 
dangerous. Um, everything down in the mind, mind really was. I mean, it was, there was stuff down there that um, when I heard the stories about Hello. the methane. Hello, and, George. Yay. And they would bring the canaries down into the mines because I, if I the don't know what's going on over here, but you know, I mean, I'm in Europe. <laughs> Can you hear us, George? No, he might not be able to hear us either. Yeah, you know, I can hear you guys Some now. You know, I mean, that was their scenes. Is, is the, you know, the Tom and Harriet death was one of the beautiful scenes, you know, that was really poetic. And that's the only one that we could never find the, um, um, the, the footage for. And I'm really, really sorry about that. That was the most beautiful romantic piece to an apps. Uh, uh, it, um, <laughs> did, did you get out of this? It's funny. Yes. You know, and, and, and I, I felt like, like I said, behind the mask, I'm always felt like a voyeur, you know, to this. And I put an end to it. It was, it was, um, it was a very uh, amazing scene. What do you think, Tom? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, I I remember that day. We, we spent the entire day, yeah. eight to ten hours, whatever it was, in that cramped little room, utility room down in the mine. Yeah, uh, I do remember very distinctly. And then I was like everyone else. Uh, I was extremely disappointed that uh, they lost the footage. And so you, you pretty much spent that, you pretty much spent that entire day actually lying on top of Harriet. Yeah. <laughs> it was a rough day. <laughs> and if I recall, didn't she have like the most beautiful, natural strawberry blonde hair? She did. Yeah. Who is that? What's her name? Terry Waterland. Terry Water. Yeah. And did she, where, did, was that her first and only movie? Where did she go? I don't I think, recall. Uh, I think she moved to Budapest. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, I, I, well, then I she should that, be. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, think that George said he, he found her locally and then uh, oh. they never were able to uh, uh, connect back with her by the way you remember george said that when he really liked an actor he was loyal to them and i only did the one for him not, not uh, <laughs> probably just a coincidence uh, <laughs> yeah but you went on to do other things <laughs> kim you got too famous for the rest of us that's the thing you got we could oh god <laughs> what um, else did I do after that? A lot of commercials. <laughs> uh, and then I think, uh, it, you know, it's funny. Where's Things Lori? just go. Like, I mean, who knows? Lori, I was Lori, in. I spoke to her this morning. She said that she's uh, her, her roof of her apartment caved in. And, like, she's just got issues. Lots of shit is happening. And, sorry, lots of stuff is happening. Uh, You're okay. And she, she didn't think that she was going to be able to make it. Um, but on that note, I just want to say that it's it's times like these where I think it's so important to recognize um, our fallen friends. Yes. Yeah. You know, because there's a there's a few of them, and they meant so much to all of us. Yeah. Um, Alf and Keith and. I'm gone, and um, it it just it, it's 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 you don't think of it that often because shit, we're 40 years ago we made this movie, but the fact that we're all here and 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 they they're with us in spirit, but they're not here. Yeah. Uh, if I could do a shout out to Keith. Uh, Keith Knight. Thank yeah. you, Robbie. That, that's really important. I'll give a shout out to Keith Knight and then somebody else maybe can talk to talk about Alf. But Keith really blew my blew, blew me away, his professionalism and uh, of all the actors in our little group on that that uh, and Alf too. Yeah. Well Alf. I mean, yeah, Alf. but he, he just wants to have a moment with Keith and then we'll talk about Alfie. Go ahead. Yeah. 
Well, no, I'm just, he was the one guy in our group, I think, who just embodied what George was going for with a working class vibe yeah. to, to all the, all the characters in, in, uh, you know, I mean, the rest of it, he made it very clear from the outset, George said, okay, you guys are working class. You're from a hard ass mining town and this is your reality. And that's what I want to see up there. And uh, Keith delivered that in abundance. And, you know, he came by it honestly. He grew up in a little town called Hornpain and way up in northern Ontario. And he knew it. He, it. It's in every frame of his performance. The rest of us, well, I'll speak for myself. You know, I had to kind of struggle to get it. I'm a big middle class, big city boy from Montreal, from Montreal. It, you know, it came and it went, but Keith was there every frame. Would, would you agree, George? He was the he was the the genuine article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 inspired us. It inspired us to yeah. to um, to be that guy. Yeah. You know, from that world. I think you guys did a great job, all of you. Neil, especially, it's so nice to see you. Yeah. I think Keith was the biggest, when I joined the cast, Keith Knight was the biggest star yeah. of, of our group because he had already done Meatballs. Yes. And yeah. he was already a big star in Second City in Toronto. And he was a well-known local Canadian actor yeah. who never was not working. Yes. So when I heard mm -hmm. that Keith Knight was on the movie, all of a sudden I was like, holy geez, this is a real movie. <laughs> Keith Knight is in it, you know. Yeah, he, he was, and he was the kindest. He always had five minutes to listen to whatever it was that you wanted to talk about. Yeah. He was, he was amazing. And I, I remember us uh, because, and I think I know Jim. You know, you spent a lot of time with Alf after the movie and through his illness. And yeah, tell us a little yeah, bit about Alf and 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 and, 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 and Tom as well. Go, going on that great uh, oh, yeah. canoeing trip with him. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I'll do one word about Keith. I uh, remember. We're getting ready to Who's set up that? a shot. Oh, Alf. That's Alf. Alf oh, Alf. there's Alf. Oh, and there's Tom. your canoe. Wow, nice. Oh, <laughs> <so> cute. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. oh, beautiful. Oh, Alfie. Oh. Yeah. Oh, how nice. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. awesome. That's the album cover. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Appreciate you sharing that. So my, there's yeah, a remembrance have a I have of Keith when we were getting ready to shoot, I think, the party scene. And there was uh, a local uh, guy that uh, Georgia got for background that did magic. And them just doing magic tricks back and forth. Like, I mean, everybody's getting set up. There's all the... Keith was always loose before, but once the cameras were... He was ready. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. And... Uh, as as far as um, as far as Alfie goes, um, classy Helen. I mean, oh, the I I remember one of our conventions, uh, and it was the last one. I didn't uh, I didn't know uh, what was going on with Alf. Uh, I knew there was something going on, but I didn't know it was as serious that we were that that was going to be the last convention we did with Alf. And well, we, um, thought, we all thought we were we all went out to a restaurant and there was this and I had gone and I'd watched this huge thunderbolt come down into like Tampa Bay and uh and we were marveling at that. Then we came back and we were eating, and then suddenly I think George noticed first, where's Al? And we were worried because I mean Tom had to take care of all of his money. Uh Tom and he were staying together. And uh, I went looking for Alf, and he had played this role in uh, the grandfather of the Wimpy Diaries of a Wimpy Kids. He was the grandfather of the Wimpy Kids' best friend. And he had connected 
with this five or six year old girl and he was there. I, I found him. We were worried that he might have gotten no and he was dancing with this little five year old girl because Alf always connected with everybody. He was the most loyal, wonderful friend you could ever have. Yeah, and I, I remember I remember he, we all thought he was it was Alzheimer's, that it was an early onset Alzheimer's. Like it, it was it was so shocking, you know, that it was uh, it was a brain tumor, wasn't it? A cancer or something? Yeah. yeah. Hey Tom, Tom. I know you and I talk often, but there's a song in this. I'm, I'm getting cut off every two minutes. I may, I may have to leave this. Oh, George. No. Well, let's go more than before you go. George, before you go, I have something to tell you. What? Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember when uh, uh, we were, the day before we were going to shoot, uh, the guys in the shower going to the cars and then driving to the party. And the day before that, I was whittling with a knife and I sliced my thumb open mm. and I had to get stitches. And I was all bandaged up in my hand. And I looked at, and I said, and I told you what happened. And you said, you stupid idiot. <laughs> you do that. And I said, well, the only scene that I really, that it's really going to be visible is when, when is when we run out of the showers all dressed and getting in the cars and we drive to the town and you said to me you said look we can cover that just throw your jacket over your hand so nobody sees your bandages <laughs> oh. i remember i was uh, i went to the hospital oh, with you Rob. Uh, i remember yeah. i was in the taxi and uh, we we're in the hospital and sit um, yeah. She it was saying, it she was, was to George the next time we see him because he may not come back. Yeah, That's, might want to get it in <laughs> as yeah. soon as he pops on screen. <laughs> if he pops on screen again, ask mm -hmm. him to come back one more time so we can he's all coming back. He, he looks like he's on his way back. Oh, good. He's, he's being a real sport. And well, then and, and, put a pesh. Oh, all I have to say is, good thing we're not all in there. there he Everybody is. go now. <laughs> yes. Can you hear us? We love you, George. We Thank you, Chris. Thank you, love. Hey guys. I, love you, George. I, I don't. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm getting kicked off every two minutes. Yes, we I just want you to know how much we adore you. Um, okay. We and, love uh, working on that. My bloody Valentine. Well, thank you. I adore you guys so much. We'll come and see you, uh, and, Aaron and uh, I, in uh, Budapest, okay? Me too. We're all coming. We're all coming. We're okay. all happy Valentine's. I think you guys can do this without me. I will try to <laughs> come back in a few minutes. You know. Yeah. But I don't. I don't yeah. know what's going. On. Perfect. Ah. There he is. Gone. Well, okay. we'll at, towards the end of the sure. show. We'll 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 bring some news about uh, doing something with George then. Uh, after this Down show, the so so hang yeah. hang tight with the show. We'll we'll make sure George gets his words in about my bloody Valentine. So don't worry. Hey, okay. thank God he's gone. He's a he's just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the show can start. <laughs> you interrupted you. Just Neil? don't bring Rob yeah. Presner in to replace him. That's all. Okay. And I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just following up what Rob told about the night. We had some real uh, blood uh, special effects. Yeah, I remember that, man. No, I got a phone call from Rob. He was next door, room next door to me. Said, Neil, I got a, I'm paraphrasing, I got a situation. I need a bit of a hand. So I went next door and it looked like a scene out of the movie, Rob. He <laughs> was very calm and he said, I've made a mistake. And he showed me his wrists and I. Yeah, I said okay. Back to the <laughs> hospital. Didn't did if I recall, did I not faint in the dry, in the elevator or got uh, Yeah, well, yeah, I had to prop you up and you know, Rob, you're a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you were kind of bleeding everywhere. And all I look, all I remember, I'd forgotten completely about it till you mentioned it on on, on another interview. All I remember is it 
was a bit of an event getting you into the taxi to the hospital. We didn't know where it was. The taxi driver was good. He did. And then it was like till about three, four in the morning, you got stitched up. We got back to the hotel. We yeah, had like a six o'clock in the morning call. And I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, how are we going to tell George? And like, I was like, back. and George, George actually was really cool. He said, well, we'll just throw your jacket over your bandages and just run to the car as normal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, any, 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 anything to make the scene go, right? <laughs> Here's the thing that I never oh, could you're talking too real clear now, George. Here's the thing I could never understand. Why did we have to shower butt naked? Realism. Explain, <laughs> George. Because that was real. <laughs> it was real. Because it was real. And it got you guys one of the first scenes we did, and it got you guys together. And what's oh, your water water with some really cold? <laughs> you're ever. You were afterwards. blowing steam. You were blowing smoke machines well, up. Fuck that. The floor. You know, you're an actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just remember. I just remember looking over at floor Tom and going like steam, even though it was cold water. <laughs> I kind of enjoyed it. It was fun. No, it was great. <laughs> I, it also <laughs> There was, oh, no. there was no water in the mine. Yeah. That was some that was some experience. <laughs> um, I heard a rumor that uh, the identity of the killer was not revealed to the cast. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Nobody true. knew. None mm -hmm. of us knew. We were all suspects. The original the original script was missing the last ten pages. Yes. That's right. Yeah. I mean Chris died new, because of course well, I I, I think that Neil sort of knew. You can tell that story, Neil. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, uh, you did? Aww. before uh, the week before we were all uh, went down to Sydney, Sydney, Nova Scotia for the shoot. I was in Toronto, down there doing some stuff. Where they sent me to a special effects house in Toronto, and I'd been cast as as Axel by then. And they uh, sent me to a special effects house, and they had a prosthetic arm made of my arm, like a prosthetic copy of it. And I said, well, why do I need to do this? Well, just, just go do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at some point I, before or after the, 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 um, the word got out that Axel was the murderer. Uh, I did get a glimpse at the last page of the script, and it told about the um, the killer miner having an arm ripped off. So I went, mm -hmm. <laughs> doing the math, it was. Uh, but uh, substance. So I was pretty sure most of the time uh, that it was probably going to be me. But then they killed my character off about, and I've learned subsequently that. There was apparently no hard and fast decisions made on who it was going to be till a couple of days before. Not sure if that's the gospel or not, but that's what I was told. I just had a feeling. Let me ask you: It did when you knew that, when you knew you were the killer before all of us knew who right. the killer was. Did Bob Pressner say to you, "If you if you reveal"? You will never work in this town again. And I never have. I never have. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you are. <laughs> well, David, I was thinking um, about the it, You know, I had to pick up a career in animation. It was like, you know, what are you going to do? You know? Hey, Rob. Yeah. Rob, the script that you have, yeah. the last one ever left, does it have the last 10 pages? No. Oh, so it's one of your very original ones. It's the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one that I have was actually called The Secret. Mm -hmm. The Secret, I remember yeah. that. Because I don't know, George can tell you when they changed it from The Secret to My Bloody Valentine, but the, the script that we all got originally, it was still called The Secret. Yes. Yeah. And if I'm correct, it was when we arrived in Nova Scotia, it was still The Secret. Yes. Yeah, it was. I think it, it was. It absolutely Paramount. was. I mean... I don't I think, think you know, well, I rocked ahead of some of you, but 
when I left, as far as anyone knew, we were still shooting The Secret. Now, I think from a talk I've had with George that they always planned to call it My Bloody Valentine, but they didn't want anybody to know that that was the title. And so the script was called The Secret. Any of you remember sitting with John Baird? Oh, yeah. Yeah, was, we would sit in the back with John Baird and in the bar scenes, John Baird and Ray Sager. Remember that? And we, and yeah. I, he, his birthday was the same as mine. I think even the same year, April 9th. And he I remember. Was, he, I, if I hmm. recall, I think he was the first. Was he not the first of the cast to pass away? John. Yeah. Yeah, he. Uh, I think it was within four, four or five years of the film yeah. uh, release. It hey was, guys, was very I, young. I just want to uh, bring our attention for a moment to uh, the the comments room. I'm noticing Kathy Wolf there. Do you re recall her name? I yeah. Do. Yeah. yeah. How yeah, do you know yeah. that? She's in the uh, chat room. Oh, there. I was on private chat. Yeah. I just hit the comments. I see all, all the comments coming in. Where are the Oh, Justin Adams is there. Bob O'Rourke, yeah. Sandy Romero. Oh my These God. are all the people we met. Where do we look? Where do you look? To your to <laughs> your right of your screen, where it says private chat comments. I don't oh. see any. Oh, I don't see any. any. If you're in full screen, you have to. Yeah, you there can't you know. see them in full screen. Oh, there. hi, Rebecca. <laughs> oh my God, wow. everybody! I can't believe everybody's there. Justin, hi, Justin. Oh, hi, Justin. Justin. Oh. Oh, wow. Sandy Homer O'Rourke, Brian, Brian, oh, yeah, Brian and Chandra there, there. Stacy Lee. I found wow. it Stacey here. Stacy is the one who sent me this. Yes, there Hi. it is. Hi, Hi Stacy. Hi, yeah. Chandra. Yeah, so, I, I want to give a shout out to Stacy and Bob and Sandy, who are not only some of the best people I know and that Eric and I know, but they are huge my bloody valentine fans and they were super excited uh for this show and really gave some good feedback and and told us to get Glory a hold of you guys and everything so i just want to give a shout out to those guys because they're completely awesome <laughs> sorry I, I didn't mean to shout in front of you but Lori hall is there and she's a huge tom kovach fan at every yes, musical is. performance yeah uh, virtual performance he does <laughs> Uh, as well as a My Bloody Valentine fan. So. Hi, Lori. Hi, Lori. See you again. Where's Lori? Uh, yeah, there this she is. This is Lori Hall. Yeah. Almost Lori, Lori Hall. You remember the woman we, we met in Cleveland that oh, had yeah. Lori's, Lori Hallier's name minus the yeah, I-E-R? I have, I have <laughs> yeah. But where's Brian, Brian, Single, Brian Singleton from Bay of Blood Weekend is there? Yes. Oh, awesome. my Hey, he and I, Sandy did a bang-up job. I believe my son uh, is, I, in, is in here, but he hasn't posted anything. Hi, Matt Burns. <laughs> so, I mean that. I mean that brings up oh, a good Matt question. Burns. When? When was? When did you guys realize that this thing had legs? That was, uh, you know, surviving and turned into this big kind of fan family that you guys have have created. Aww. <laughs> That's Brian and Sandra. Oh, wonderful. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, that beautiful sign they designed, the only replica because oh. the original was torn down. Uh, uh, I think George, I think George. Oh, Aww. Aww. I think George asked why Lori isn't here. I think he missed the details of what happened. George, are you there? I think he's frozen again. I think he's frozen. <clears throat> he's on his oh. way back, though. Hang tight. Oh, I see, I see him, him now. coming back. George. Lori, Lori's uh, ceiling caved in, and she's not. He's not there, Robbie. He's, he's, he's frozen. He. Oh, I just see his face. Right. Yeah, looks like he's trying to come we, back in. Can we? Uh, can we? Can we? Um, can we save this chat because I didn't realize it was there, and uh, a lot of it's, people... a, it's archived. It's it's archived. archived. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think just to get us back to what Matt was saying, when we, when did we realize? that My Blood Valentine had become a cult hit or something of a phenomenon. Um, uh, well, I should say I lived, I lived in LA for 15 years 
from 85 through to uh, 2001. And My Bloody Valentine was notorious around LA for that time as a uh, punk rock band. Oh, the, yes. The movie yeah. itself seemed to have mm -hmm. disappeared uh, or had its little brief two minutes of fame, whatever, back in the day. And uh, I was doing other stuff in L.A. at the time. And I just noted, that, oh, OK, so there's this punk rock band around L.A. I think George may have mentioned that they were from Ireland originally. That's what My Bloody Valentine was in L.A. But about... When, when was the meeting at the Bloor Street Cinema in Toronto, guys? Was that... Wait, are you saying that band before, the, my, before our movie? That band existed before our movie? I thought they took no. the name from no, our movie. No, 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 no. Afterwards. afterwards. No, they borrowed the name, but... Uh, You're talking about the 90s, Neil, or roughly? Uh, yeah, yeah, it mm -hmm. would have been the 90s, absolutely, mm -hmm. Eric. Yeah, yeah. But there was a screening by a Toronto um, horror movie association called, uh, oh, damn, my, my dementia is showing up right now. Uh, <laughs> something, uh, Nui, uh, something or other. <laughs> anyway, they, they uh, put together a night with the movie. They invited the, the Toronto folks uh, to come out for it. And we went to see it. And... There were, I, I was astounded, there were people who traveled from as far away as Pennsylvania had come to attend to the screening that night. Um, and it was like, uh, what? And then it started to emerge, for me anyway, that evening, that there was this, let's call it, I guess, a cult following had emerged around this movie. I was completely astounded. I, I had no idea. It had never even entered my mind that that the film had, had galloped uh, ahead and attained all of this notoriety or this uh, uh, fandom. What do you choose the choose the uh, the term? Tom, what was it? Or Jim, rather? Or Jim and Tom? Both of you, I think, were there. Sorry, yeah. What? Just oh, I wasn't there. Uh, that was that. Uh, I got an email from Australia, or, or a, a messenger message from, uh, from Australia, from Barry Dominey Jr., who might be on. I don't know. And, oh yeah. Um, and and uh, he said, "Are you the Jim Murchison?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy Whitcomb. I got. And I went, uh, yeah. <laughs> and he says, uh, are you going to the big reunion? They had found, I think it was the, the reason they were having that screening was because they'd found the extra minutes at that point, And this was the first cut of that. Was it, were they in it? Um, anyway, I, it was, I was in Ottawa. It was a short trip, but I had other things that I was doing. So I couldn't make it to that one. I think it was, uh, and I talked to you afterwards about uh, because I Bob Presner was there and you and Paul Zaza and 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 um, Lori and, and and Paul and 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 also and also He's Paul here with all his heart, was he at says. that one <laughs> and Alf and Lori you guys do you know Bob Presner so, yeah, I was I was told that was the first I had an inkling that we were that the show was popular. Hey, welcome back, George. Guys, oh, guys. Hey, guys. I just want to acknowledge quickly. I just want to acknowledge, like want to acknowledge quickly that I know of at least two people, one of them is in the chat, you all. have my bloody Valentine tattoos. Which is oh. unbelievable. Hi, George. And I, wanna, I, wanna, I think George I is saying this. he's, he's, he's given up. Yeah. What? George was talking. I think he gave up. I just want to. I just want to say that um, um, I just saw in the chat that my, my daughter. Oh. Yes, your beautiful daughter. <laughs> my daughter's in the chat, so hey. I want to say hi yeah. to my daughter. I mean, <laughs> that's unbelievable. I didn't think that she would uh, think to come on, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, th I think George wants to say some parting comments before he gets booted again. So, George, if you want to go ahead. 
yeah. I'm, 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 I don't know if I'm on, but I get booted off every two minutes, guys. So before this carries on any longer, I'm going to say I love you all. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you guys really soon. And, uh, yes. you know, may Bully Valentine live with you together for the 50th anniversary real soon. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Love know, you, George. I, I just miss you guys. Love you, George. I wish I could be there with you. In, uh, yeah. In Canada. You know, maybe maybe next time we'll do it in I've person. This job in Hungary for the next two years. Oh, wow. The 40, the I'll, 40. I'll Third reunion. We'll all be uh. <laughs> guys, I'm just going to read some of the chats so that we can respond really quickly. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I just want to Bob shout out to my dear friend Rebecca and Bob Presser. George, you're on. We can hear you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Arden Rushpan is in the uh, chat room too. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Arden. Hi Arden. Hi Arden. Arden oh, hi, met hi, me hi, at hi. the. And we were talking about Lord me at the airport. Oh, Arden. Oh, my God. I know. So we were talking about um, Lori Hall just moments earlier. And here's a picture of Lori Hall with Lori Hallier's name tag at the Florida convention. Aww. And we, we blocked oh. off. Uh, oh, 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 it's green. So that's why the green screen is coming. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we just thought it was real awesome. weird, nice coincidence that Lori Hall and Lori Hallier. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Hallier. Hallier, sorry. She ain't French Canadian, dude. Yes, Mr. Kovacs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Kovacs. Rob, Rob Stein. <laughs> <laughs> I can't um, believe that my daughter is on. I can't believe that. That's so great. <laughs> Elaine, Elaine, when did you uh, when did you become aware of what had happened to the film that it had become um, attained cult status? You were, you would have been uh, it, not until not until I got on Facebook, and yeah. then it took a couple of years. Right. Um, you know, uh, I I started getting involved. I started to audition and it just seemed like there was a way more inroads for horror like oh people were like oh i saw you in my buddy you know and they basically you know i just had a lot of luck because of it and i started to realize oh this is a thing this is a real thing yeah. of course now you know the rest is history like i have my now you're a queen really really good friends four thousand nine hundred ninety nine of them are my buddy valentine friends so, yeah. like but, jim like Jim, uh, I I had it was a, maybe a, a few months after I joined Facebook in 2009, maybe it was or whenever, and uh, a few months later I get this message from uh, Barry Dominey Jr. in Australia, who I didn't know at the time. What and a he, great guy! Just this quick question: He says, "Are you the Thomas Kovach in My Bloody Valentine?" I said, "Yes." And that was followed up by this lengthy message he sent to me about you guys should get together again and reunions yeah. and all that. And it's a big hit all over the world. And I'm like, what? And yeah. that's how I initially got in contact with Alf through Facebook. So it's been yeah, great. Yeah, for Facebook yeah. for those things. I mean, really, honestly, like it, it, it kept us, it reconnected us and kept us in touch and all. I mean, we were in touch before then for sure, but uh, it kind of opened the world to us and made us accessible to the world. And I think that's a really great thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was our last reunion? In-person reunion. Uh, um, was it the one in Tampa? Uh, I think it's Cinema one. Wasteland no, no. a couple years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Some, somebody is uh, in the in the chat is saying. Yeah, something. October 2018. With Brian and Chandra. Uh, and Alvin. No, no, that was no, with was, uh, Ken Kitch. Yeah. So was uh, was Alfie at that one? No. Yeah. No, he had passed. No, no. Tampa Bay was his last reunion. Right. Yeah, Tampa, Alfie was there. When we went to Cleveland, Alf was, Alf had already passed. When was the Cleveland one? Did I did I go to that one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Remember? Remember stuff. <laughs> yeah. This is Remember, what, yeah, we did the Cleveland one. Tampa? Don't you remember we went to the yeah, Hungarian that's restaurant? That's where we met Sandy and Rob. 
Oh, I thought that was in Florida. No, no, we went to no, the, no. We went well, the Hungarian yeah. restaurant where we yeah. spent forty minutes in the Uber. Uh, yeah, in the Uber cab. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we took an Uber <laughs> to the into downtown yeah. forever. <laughs> and 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 that's where you we met. We drove back in a Tesla. My wife and her sister. What? And we, and oh yeah, up. I remember your sister, your sister-in-law. <laughs> my sister-in-law. <laughs> remember her. She's a great teacher. A Shakespearean teacher. She's an English teacher, yeah. Yes, and she loves Shakespeare. <laughs> Is Jim listening and he's just on a black screen? Oh, no. Okay. Jim, I got to tell you, she's watching. <laughs> she's a lover. Say it now. She's, she's, she's lovely, and I enjoyed... <laughs> Going through my Shakespearean repertoire with her. Uh, uh, I'm a married man. <laughs> she was, she's lovely. Man, your bicycle is backpedaling like crazy. We want to give you guys time to talk. Do you have any questions for us? <laughs> well, wait, 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 but she recently <laughs> got divorced. Oh, <laughs> again? Oh my God! <laughs> no, no, that she was recently divorced when I met her. Yes, yes. Um, hey, doors open. Yeah. Has anybody? No, I'm not divorced, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> oh well, she's not interested, Thank you, Brian. Okay. Not, not, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just want to say Jack Geller was on earlier. Now, he was at the very first convention in Jersey where we were shocked. To, I remember I remember uh, Tom going like, so we put these little signs out and then people come up with stuff and we write on it and they give us money? <laughs> and, uh, and Sean goes, yeah. He goes, that's not good. Tom was not convinced that was going to happen. Uh, you but guys Jack. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. We're, you're back. And the little did we know that we were actually undercharging right. for this. I just want to say. Yeah. So Jack had a. Jack Geller, who was, who's in this chat. Wait, 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 just say something. Oh, I'm sorry. George, what is it? Let's get George in. Here, mm. we we can barely hear you, but we're so glad you could be here, George. <laughs> this is what I heard. Eh, uh, ah, <laughs> 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 this is so funny. It's the reappearance of George, so we can say goodbye mm -hmm. <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's because he wishes he was here, and I wish he was here too. Uh, before we get beyond it, Ryan had a good question. Uh, just curious, have any of you guys kept anything special from the film? Oh, yep. Oh, Ryan has stuff. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? I got, well, I have the poster, obviously. I have my, I have my uh, gas mask that I wore as, a, you know, as part of the costume when we were down in the mines. I have the script. The original script. Original. Yeah. Um, I got, um, and I got, lot, I took a lot of pictures on our days off and I made an album. Yeah, it's really of, nice. I made an album of My Bloody Valentine of everything that was pretty much uh, on our days off. Like there, I have a lot of pictures of. Cynthia and Carl. Ooh, Cynthia and Carl. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I was their photographer for the day. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, sorry, Rob. Go ahead. No, and I also have, I took a lot of pictures of all of the prostheses that are like of Elaine and of Happy and of, um, uh, geez, uh, uh, what's her face that got Mabel. Thrown. Mabel? Mabel got thrown into the dryer. So I got a lot of I got a lot of stills of of their prosthetic death. Um, 
and Elen, obviously, because, you know, Elen and I. <laughs> I, I, I do want to say that Elen and I, in 1981, we actually promoted safe sex. <laughs> <laughs> did, in 1981. In 1981, you said, do you know what we need? And I said, yeah, I got one right here. I said, no, silly. <laughs> A couple More of beers. Beer. A couple of beers. <laughs> that was the death of me, though. I could have just like done it with you and saved our lives, but oh well. End of story. The and movie would have ended right there. Mommy, <laughs> did you steal that miner's mask? Is that what you're saying? You stole it off the set? Well, I brought it with me. I didn't steal it. <laughs> I borrowed it. I did the same thing with my miner's hard hat and battery belt. Somehow it made the trip back to Montreal. <laughs> we weren't being paid enough. We had to take something. <laughs> yeah. okay, well, Bob Presser says he had the knife. What did Bob say? He has the knife. Ellen got hung up. Oh, I got hung up. Yes, I did get hung up. Oh, um, oh. oh, wow. I have the knife that was used in the hand, hand stab, stab scene. scene. Ooh. Oh, yeah. 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 You will never you. work in this town again, Bob Pressner. That's right. <laughs> I gave everything back. I didn't know any better. <laughs> Peter, did you save uh, save <laughs> Bob? Just, well, it's funny because you know the little planes we had to uh, commute out of uh, Sydney. Yeah, yeah, they were. Well, uh, Carl and I, the rock that Lori uh, smashed me on the back with. In the last fight scene with you, Neil, that styrofoam. Uh, it's thing. styrofoam. <laughs> so I, I had two picks. One was a sty. Uh, come on, he's on English. Uh, fiberglass pick, and one was a real pick in my duffel bag. Mm -hmm. And Carl and I were uh, pretending that we had this massive, huge rock that we were carrying down the runway. And the <laughs> stewardess, in the, those days they were called stewardesses. The flight attendant said, "Oh, I'm sorry, boys. Like you, you can't bring that rock on the plane, you know." And so Carl and I just gave it to her. She went, "Oh, you boy, stop fooling around." And so we put it in the overhead. And I, for about seven years, I I mustered that that styrofoam rock all over Montreal until it finally fell apart and revealed itself as styrofoam. Hey, um, I just I'm looking in the chat room, and I just saw uh, Josh Taylor said, what was the inspiration to have a ballad for Harry Warden at the end of the film? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, was it the Paul's off I right think now? it was, uh, I, w the way I, I understood it from George is they wanted a big disco party scene, which George hated the idea. They ran out of money. And so he went to Paul Zaza uh, and said, can we do some sort of sort of maritime theme sort of ballad that evokes this whole thing? And, um, and that's how Paul Zaza ended up coming in with it. Paul says that he was just trying to do a quickie that ripped off the ballad of the Edmund Fitzgerald. And, yeah. oh, wow. uh, I and, thought Paul that song. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, guys, um, it, it, it's actually really valuable to look yes. at, at the private chats. I just got yes. a question from Trinidad Burgos, who said, the question is for everyone. What was the death in the film that felt like the biggest gut punch? The one that conveyed the most emotion out of you when you've when you've seen both versions of the film, was it Alf who fell uh, with the rope and got hung? I don't know. She's yes. asking all of yes. us. Okay, that was Alf. that was the biggest yeah. punch for me. The uh, when when he fell down the shaft and the rope caught his neck. For me, it was and his Keith. body kept going. Keith mm -hmm. getting the uh, oh. the bolt right in the forehead and yeah. the way he performed that was extraordinary it was like uh, yeah that I was I wasn't that, i didn't that was, the film i wonder that was if that really hard the inspiration for this uh, no country for old men you know mm -hmm. the guys using the uh, the cattle yeah. punch or the 
-hmm. No, it was a vacuum uh, pump, like a severe vacuum compressed air. That's how he, uh, he blew the locks out and killed people. Was he, that's why he was walking around with that compressed tank all the time. It was highly compressed air. That's how he killed everybody. Right, but it was a, it was a cattle. It, he described it how uh, it was meant to kill cattle and put a, you know, the... the a stun. Uh, the river? Uh, yeah. oh, cattle so, prod. Cattle mm -hmm. prod. So I'm wondering if maybe oh. the, the MBV version of that was the inspiration for No the, Country for Old Men. Oh. I'm wondering. I don't know. Possibly. I'll take it. We'll say yes. Okay. <laughs> put that I, I had used a lot of nail guns before that, so I was used to using that uh, piece of <laughs> machinery. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, in carpentry, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Of okay, I have another question for you. Well, hang, hang on real quick. Uh, for Jim and Helene, did you guys Me, it's take Elaine. anything home? Helene's killing. Uh, did me. you guys take that? I was sad through all, throughout all of it. I'm an extremely emotional person. I thought you, you, all the all the deaths were tragic. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's one question here. Oh, oh yeah, was there? Oh, it keeps people keep adding, so it keeps moving. Uh, was there any particular scene you liked the most? As fans of the film, my fave death was the bartender happy. That was a good one. Uh -huh. was <laughs> <laughs> that you know what? That was the one death that I kind of that was a little bit foreshadowing because when he goes uh, uh, and he opens the door again, you know he's going to get it. <laughs> you know he's going to get it. The one the the death that actually blew me away the most was Tom and Harriet's. Mm. Yeah. That was the one that got me. Mm -hmm. As a viewer of the movie, I was like, no, really? You can't wait until they finish the deed? You got to <laughs> kill them now? <laughs> that, that was that that cruel. It was cruel. Yeah. Well, it was the most poetic Valentine scene too. Like, I mean, together forever, you know. Yeah. Just, uh, oh. Unfortunately, we never, never actually Cupid's, saw it. Cu Cupid's yeah. arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Cupid's auger. Cupid's auger. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cupid's auger. Justin um, Adams. Justin Adams asks, the junkyard scene is a favorite scene. Uh, <laughs> favorite scene to watch cooking TV dinners on the car engine was great. Where did that come from? Who thought uh, of that? Was it? Was it I don't think it was in the script. Every Canadian does that. <laughs> oh, really? Cook? What are you talking about? <laughs> I think George. I think George said in his research that that is something that people. I don't know miners or whatever. That's just something they did as a hangout. They would just start the car up and. Cook a dinner on it. I thought it was a, smart. I thought it was a Keith Knight yeah, idea. Instead of a tailgate party, you got a manifold party, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it. I thought it was. Uh, I remember being there that night. I was in the scene, and uh, for some reason, I have a recollection that uh, Keith Knight. Uh, that was his idea to cook all the mm -hmm. meal over the engine, but I could be just remembering. Yeah. It. You know what? It actually stands <laughs> to reason that Keith would have thought of that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, because he was the kind of guy that, would, that came from a world where you got to reheat your food, use the engine. <laughs> <laughs> it's very smart. It's very good thinking, actually. It's a very Canadian thought. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lori, Lori I like Smith. Lori's question here. She, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really Lori. funny, Lori. I was just thinking about this because I didn't know if TJ played his own harmonica because I knew that Neil does play his own harmonica. Oh, yeah. Currently, I do. Yeah. No, I was just learning my first basic. Basic. Listen to me. My first basic uh, blues riff on harmonica when you're shooting down there. So I had the idea of uh, just blowing a few notes on it in the scene where me and TJ are trying to work out who was going to be uh, who was going to be uh, Sarah's please. 
Um, and uh, so George, said, yeah, good, let's try it. So we did. And um, I will, and then TJ chimed in uh, with his. I would note that what the the playing that you hear in the final movie is not is not my own. <laughs> oh, <laughs> However, oh, I do play, play blues and other forms of harmonica music with the musical group in Toronto right now. So I stuck with it, and I had some uh, shout out to a great teacher of mine called Al Lerman, a Toronto uh, blues man of great accomplishment who. Uh, was a neighborhood uh, friend and teacher that uh, gave me some actual training. Up till then, I'd been a self-taught musician, which means I had an idiot for a teacher. So, <laughs> here's, a, here's, a question. here's a question from Justin Wolfel. Can I just interject and say that Bob yeah. does confirm that Keith uh, uh, Keith suggested to George about the manifold? Oh, okay. so there you are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. I was pissed because I wasn't in that scene, and I really wanted to be. But hey, you know, you I wanted to be in all the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> you, Rob, you even wanted to be in my love scene. Yeah, I, I wanted to be underneath Harriet. Rob, Rob is, <laughs> oh, that's Rob a menage. Wanted to be Harriet. Wow. Rob, Rob is. He wanted to be Harriet. <laughs> Rob is the no. It's summer night. No, do not go there, Tom. Well, you had silky red hair, I believe, uh, in the <laughs> film. Yes. yes. Yeah. You're red for that, yeah. You're yeah. red. <laughs> so, Justin Waffle, Wolfel, Wolfell says, what was, was, what, what was it like shooting inside the mine? And how was it filming in a mine costume? And I guess uh, I can answer that, yeah, Neil, <laughs> Tom, and and Peter. Yeah. Go ahead, Neil. Uh, oh well, uh, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw over to Peter here in terms of uh, working with the costume. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's generally no not known that. Uh, Peter, the vision that you had from behind the gas mask and everything was pretty obscured and pretty limited and yet you had to do all of this complex and sometimes a little bit dangerous choreography am i right yeah it was uh it was all choreographed um and you know i like all of us we'd all been to theater school and i was in my second year of theater school so we had done uh you remember cynthia hendrickson our our ballet jazz teacher yes oh my goodness I, th I, I really give her credit for the way that the minor moved. The, the, the movements were very um, um, thought out, uh, direct, still. And working behind the mask, as I said before, was like the best thing I could have ever hoped for as a young actor in the very first film I'd ever done because it gave me an, the opportunity to look out without anyone seeing in. Mm -hmm. So my my persona, as even as a young actor, was very very calm, um, and I had to be because, as Neil said, some of the stunts were were quite dangerous, and that pick had to miss people's faces, uh, their stomachs, their arms by just a sheer inch. So um, just to be in the stillness of that deep deep mind, uh, you know, brought sort of a meditative kind of aspect to that minor the movements were never wasted uh even in the fight scenes um mm -hmm. uh, but uh i think i lost about 15 pounds well. just from being in the costume with the mask and i remember i, I got to go back because i was doing the music for one of our shows uh playboy the western world and i was playing all the uh, penny whistle so i had to go back and record it and then fly back, and unbeknownst to me, I had a I had an ear infection from the sweat that would come down and drip into my ears. So when that little plane took off yeah. to head back, I thought my head was going to explode. Wow. Not, not, and then when I got back to Montreal, I got some uh, antibiotics to to be able to fly back and finish the film. So yeah, you you uh, 
you sweat a lot down there in the mine. It seemed like it was cold, but it was at a consistent, I think it was a consistent 56 or 62 degree temperature down there. Wow. The thing, the I thing just, that the can thing I just, people don't realize, oh, sorry. Just, the thing that people don't realize is that I, when we were shooting down there, it was, it was for the most part, pretty cramped spaces. I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't like this. They had to figure uh, out where to put the freaking camera. Yeah, well, yeah. oh, there he is. Yeah. So that was not makeup, was it? We really came out of the mine looking like that with the black face. That wasn't makeup, was it? Uh, you know what? I can't remember that. But I do remember being scared shitless when someone would say, dude, we are a mile under the ocean and we're 2,000 feet down. And I'm going, wait a second. What if something freaking happens? <laughs> <laughs> and that was the thing. I was, I, was, I was scared. There was a couple of scenes in there where, I don't know, um, there's a fight scene that happens. And Neil, you're, you're the one, your character, Axel, breaks it up. But yep. and and we're like fixing some pipe or something, and 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 you got to break it. And I'm all the time in my head. I'm thinking, holy shit! Thank you, you're a mile under the freaking ocean. I was, <laughs> I, it it kind of freaked me out in my head. But I figured, hey, if everybody else is here, I'm okay. <laughs> I, I think that was a. Uh, I think that was the most realistic scene, actually, with the miners working. Yeah. That was you were you're all close together, deep in a tunnel, fixing the wires, and and uh, and Neil had to stop a fight, and yeah, all all the the crew boss came in and stopped the fight between Neil and TJ. That's what it yeah. was. That was that, was that was really good. That was a that was a great scene. Yeah, it was a great scene. But we were in like really cramped quarters. And all I could think of is, why isn't there a canary down here? <laughs> <laughs> I remember what Peter, what Peter mentioned earlier, that there was this kind of funny kind of headspace calm that you got into when you were down in the mine, uh, when we were working. And we weren't uh, as deep as actual, uh, the actual miners would go. But it was funny. It was a kind of a strange kind of psychic space that you got into down yeah. there. Um, I, you know, what Robbie said, I, I'd second. That, you know, <laughs> intellectually, you were aware that yes, you know, this is not normal. <laughs> but it was time, scary. I mean, it was scary. And honestly, that's where they, as a production, they cut corners. I mean, they well, just. I'm saying you were the canaries. That's what the deal oh, was. Yeah, we were the canaries. <laughs> anyway, while I'm interjecting here, I just want to get a word in edgewise just to say, Bob, thank you for being in the chat. Bob yeah. Prattner, yeah. he was a huge part of our ensemble at the time. And uh, he'll he never was... work in this town again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He says, you, you guys were the canaries. Set. And he really, he really knows a lot about the movie, so his comments are very, very valuable. And uh, we love you, Bob. Thank you for being here. Okay, thanks yeah. for being here, Bob. Bob, you, Bob, I wish you were here, and and maybe the next time you will be. I don't know if they're going to do a behind the scenes thing. Well, <laughs> well, Eric, Matt, um, I think you said the maximum was ten in this mm -hmm. window. Is there any reason why right. Bob couldn't join us right now? No, go. Bob's got the link. If Bob wants to click on the link and come on in, he's more than welcome to join us. Come on, Bob. Come on in, Baldy. Join us. Yes. Yeah, that's your official what invite. Your oh. No. Is, is there the any fruit? By Romero's ghost, he says, come in, Bob. <laughs> come in, Bob. Is there any truth to the rumor? Come in, Bob. Coming in. I was refused entry by Romero's ghost. <laughs> Send, Send me the link. link. Is there any truth oh, to the rumor? You got that, Matt? Yeah, I got it. That okay. there was a, You're sending a, it, Matt? one of the yeah. the crew or the actors died in the mine, and Bob went quick, save the canaries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably. Um, I have a quick question from the audience or from Kathy Wolf. Does anyone remember the miners of the deep choir? They played the extras. 
got my first lesson in drinking moonshine after you left Cape Breton. Yeah. After huh. you all left Cape Breton. The, the I, miners uh, actually, of the deep choir. Men of the deep. Um, there's a famous celebrated uh, miners chorale uh, in Nova Scotia, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, called the Men of the Deep. Um, I think that's what Kathy is referring to. Uh, they've been together for years. They're, they perform internationally. Um, and uh, they do, obviously, music from Nova Scotia, from the great Nova Scotia musical tradition. I think that's who Kathy is referring to. Uh, Jimmy, you're from I down actually, there. Uh, I actually uh, was in... Uh, one of the first things I visited was uh, this little store in Cape Breton and they had a men of the deeps cassette and I had a cassette player back then for you youngsters cassettes <laughs> with these little tape things. Four track. <laughs> they fit in track. this. I had a, I, it was a four track. So hey, I bought Bob. an hey, Bob. album of the men of the deeps. Bob! Uh, greatest hey, Bob. hits. Hey Bob. <laughs> and I would play that before I went to bed every night. Hey, good to see you, Bob. Yeah, you haven't changed. You look the same. How can that be? <laughs> Peptides. Hey, guys, I just want to say that um, two years ago, I returned to Cape Breton Island to play golf at a golf course called Cabot Cliffs. In in great, I'm I'm a I'm an avid golfer. I love to play golf. And, and I went to this golf course called Cabot Cliffs in Cape Breton Island, and I was having dinner. And one of the waitresses, this is like two years ago, so 38 years later. Come on. Wow. This waitress says, no way. I know you. <laughs> and I go, no, you don't. She goes, yes, my bloody Valentine. <laughs> wow. So – Obviously, this film has had an impact, um, at least in Cape Breton, but I think, <laughs> I think worldwide, I think that's. Uh, but how cool was that? I was like blown away. This girl said, "I know you," and she, she's half my age. Oh, everybody's half your age, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, do you ever get recognized? Do you ever get recognized, Neil? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I, I Brian you know. recognized you in Toronto. <laughs> Brian Singleton, but we were on the way to the convention floor. Yeah, no, I, I can't remember. I can't remember an instance in all the years I lived in LA or uh, subsequent to returning to Canada where somebody. Um, oh, actually, it's not true. Um, a guy I used to play pickup hockey with about 10 years ago um, came up to me one day. And usually we're the sort of, you know, we had a swearing at each other relationship, fighting for the puck. And he came up to me one day while we were in the dressing room getting ready to hit the ice. And he said, he had a strange look at his face. And he said, my wife knows you. Which, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! My wish. Yeah. After we straightened out that his wife was a horror fan, that was about the only instance I can think of, Elaine. Um, I, I enjoyed being, uh, frankly, I enjoyed being unrecognized. It, uh, yeah, it kind of suits me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because nobody's ever recognized me from my bloody Valentine. But I, when I hear that, my wife knows you. I just like kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Back off. Scary. Well, hey, it's funny. It's funny when we're at we were at the first uh, convention we did in New Jersey, Cherry Hills. Yeah. And um, a fellow came up, and uh, he's looking at me, and he goes, "So, um, looks at my name, he looks down at me, he looks at the pictures, he goes, so you're you're the guy, right?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, um, "This guy, the guy, yeah, I'm the guy." Hey, hey Johnny. It's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Only then, you know, what he paid 20 bucks to get my autograph. Neil, yeah. for you. 
Oh, Jesus. Look at that. Oh. oh look and I haven't it. put on a pound since then. Not a pound. <laughs> you don't look that different, though, Neil. You look pretty yeah. much the same. You're oh, recognizable. Neil. Hey, people are asking about Don, uh, the sheriff. They're asking about uh, a lot. Of, there's a lot of questions about him. About Does anybody have any mm. things to say about Don? Franks? Is it Don Franks? I can't remember. Yeah, it's Don, Don, it's Don yeah. Franks. He yeah. passed away. He passed away a few years ago. And uh, he was very, very active uh, right until the end, uh, always in the jazz scene, improv. He was a brilliant scat singer. And um, yeah, major, oh, yeah. major, major. He, I, I, I don't know if you know this, but he was in, uh, he was in a uh, Francis Ford Coppola film. Uh, uh, I think it was called Brigadoon. Uh, and he was a lead actor, and he was going to be like the the biggest thing in Hollywood. And he he just didn't like Hollywood, so he told them to fuck themselves. And uh, so he never worked in that town again. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a big deal as well to have on set. Like I was pretty impressed that he was on our set. He was a he was a yeah. working actor. He was a Canadian star at the time. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, and I didn't until about the third or fourth day that when he showed up for work, Bob, you can confirm this. He had long gray hair yes. to his waist. Um, he married uh, an indigenous woman. I don't I don't know from what nation. And he dressed and groomed himself like uh, like uh, the 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 people from his wife's nation. Uh, so like a, a native person. And um, they had to uh, tie his long long hair back up very tight in a tight precursor yeah. to a man bun and put it under uh, this is right isn't it? bob i'm not imagining yeah, this. yeah no no he did he did he had a great hair piece. He, he wore he wore the curl he wore the spin under his wig yeah. and um I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about don so don was uh, sequestered uh with all of you guys in the hotels that the very few hotels that we put you in and uh, a day into his stay at the hotel, he shows up at my place, which was in the middle of town. I had this hacienda. I had this like three room house over some bar. And, um, and he shows up at about 1130 at night and he says, I can't stay at the hotel. I'm moving in. And he had his bag with him. <laughs> and for the, he was there for, I think we shot with him for four days or five days. And he stayed with me. He, we, we, we shared the bunk together. I mean, he, we didn't sleep in my bed. He tried, but he didn't sleep in my bed. <laughs> and I tried too, but, you know, with the hair, it was not a good match. So, uh, so uh, yeah, so, so that was Don. Yeah, he was a great, well, I, great, we, great. We, do, do, were you making too much noise at the hotel? Why didn't he want to stay at the hotel? The hotel was lovely, I remember. It was an old big Fa Fabulous hotel where a lot of people got to meet a lot of people late at night. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was he was he was a very uh, as has been pointed out uh, he he was a very spiritual person yeah. and he had very much become uh, part of uh, the indigenous uh, religious world spiritual world yeah. and I think his, his daughter has um, um, something like sky sky chief or something Summer or other Cree, uh, Summer Cree yes that's it yes that's his daughter she's mm -hmm. an actor. Yeah. Somebody, guys, we we're asking a lot about the remake and how we feel about it. Has anybody seen that remake? I haven't. Yeah, I've seen it. I saw it on tape, not in the movie house. Yeah. Boring. <laughs> I uh, I watched it with my daughters when they were fourteen and twelve and didn't pre-screen it. It oh. was awkward. <laughs> oh, <I bet. laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think awkward. we paid attention to that movie, but I think that that question comes up a lot. So I keep well, saying every time that I will see it. So I will see it. I don't know. I will. Yeah, Rob, I, Rob Stein. Rob I Stein. Wanna, I just want to say that uh, a, a gentleman by the name of Dan Grant said on on our chat, "I live in Toronto. I have friends in the UK, Portugal." Uh, the U.S., Australia, and many different countries. I know someone in every country who mentioned that they not only like My Bloody Valentine, but love it. Uh, My friend Neil Demayano has My Bloody Valentine 
as his favorite slasher film of all time. This, wow. film, this film transcends generations. Agreed. By the way, that's a, that's a, a complete copy of Tarantino, who also said yeah. that My Bloody Valentine is his favorite slasher movie of all times. And I'm waiting, you know. to, sell my, I'm waiting to sell him my script. <laughs> untouched, original, the real deal. The only one in existence in the world. Because no one else saved their scripts except That's me. True. That was so smart, Robbie. It's worth thousands, I'm sure. Hundreds. Hundreds, Hundreds of thousands. When we were when we were, in, when we were in Tampa, some guy threaded through the script and said, is this the original? And I said, yeah, that's the one that they gave me when I showed up in Nova Scotia. He said, well, you don't have any markings or n anything on it. I said, no, I, I kept it and I got another one. And the guy said, let me make a phone call. The guy phones the guy who, who is a bloody Valentine aficionado and he offered me a hundred thousand dollars for Ooh. it. What? Oh my god! And I said no. Uh. because I'm waiting for Quentin. <laughs> <laughs> well, just when you think, just when you think Rob Stein has certain principles, you find out it's all about the money. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I might not sell it to Quentin. I'll, I might say to Quentin, I'll give it to you if you put me in your next film. Oh, that's oh. <laughs> Maybe. He's not doing a film anymore. You're, it's over, but, uh, Robbie. He, he did his last movie. No, he didn't. He didn't yeah, know. I know. He's yeah, just the next, he next last movie he Like does. old blue eyes. Every, we Once he finds out that My Bloody Valentine script, the original, is available... He'll make another movie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Here's the thing. The, uh, who came up with the Harriet the Barmaid song? Where, what's the story on that one? Oh, yeah. No, I, no idea. No. No idea. No idea. Tommy, you must It might have been John Baird. I mean, <laughs> probably John Baird. I don't, I, I don't think anybody we, improvised it. Who um, was singing it? Yeah, who sang it? Nobody sang uh, it. It was in the soundtrack, Keith, wasn't it? Was it? The cast, I believe. Sang no, no. It, yeah. it was, it was oh, you're bar. right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you're right. And yeah, uh, you guys were all. I was sitting there. I, I was supposed to be the shy guy, and you guys were all um, ribbing me about the fact that I had a crush on her. And I think you were all singing the song in the bar while I was sheepishly watching all of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's and my. It, was, I, it, sound, I, it I sounds. Like, it sounds started like something. It up, and I think. I think, I, think, I think that uh, it sounds uh, like something that George would have. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, George would have allowed that to have been improvised. I can't remember it in the original script. Uh, wow. I think the the line and Rob, you should run back into the outhouse and. Get I was the just going to say, Rob's <laughs> the only one that can tell us at this point. Take, <laughs> take, 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 take a look whether it refers to you know the 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 and all the people and all the kids rib uh, Tom. And uh, mm -hmm. and there's nothing about this the song. I'll bet you. Yeah, Robbie, go get the script. We want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go get go get a hundred thousand dollars that left your territory. Go go. You want me to go get it? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No. yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it, if it if it would only take a second, if it's going to take a long time, forget it. It'll yeah, take, it's going to take a lot. It'll take a minute and a half. Go get go. it. Let's go. Get it. We got that. We'll, we'll fill it. Go, ahead. go get it. I'll go, go get it. it. Oh, the, the hell? All right. This Let's is a great. This is a great. A minute and a half. Okay. This is a, this is a great yeah. question because um, uh, on the way, uh, the question from Roland Keller is: How receptive were the locals mm -hmm. in town of the filming, and did you run into any setbacks while, <laughs> 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 right, you while hour, shooting? You have an hour, Bob. <laughs> let, let me put it to you this way. When you come into this little town and you have to call the movie The Secret because you don't want them to know it's about an explosion that <laughs> happens in their mine and nine people die from uh, from being killed and the other ones are eaten secret. in the mine. Uh, mm -hmm. So they loved us because we didn't tell them any of that. 
<laughs> and they also left us that, something very similar to that had actually happened. But the the explosion in the twenty six was not even a year uh, removed from that. Yeah, but 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 they were great because. Uh, it had been sort of a, a naval town at one point, so the Stubbard family um, fed us. And who did they feed before that? They fed the naval base in Sydney. And they were people that uh, Mrs. Stubbard and, and her three kids um, used to be. A, and we were running a 24-7 operation, if you remember, between first unit and second unit. We were always shooting. We were always shooting. and And so... All of the folks, all of the folks in the mine. First of all, the 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 uh, the singers, the miners of the deep, as it were. Uh, they were people running up and down the 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 corridor where the train was coming down and up, and um, uh, all of the extras were from town. Um, it, it, no, they 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 liked having us there. The only people who didn't like having us there were people who drove into the town and stopped <laughs> at the at the Valentine Bluff City Hall stopped in to ask where Sydney Mines was. Because if you remember, we dressed that whole town and the whole town was Valentine's, Valentine's Bluff celebrate the sign coming into the town. <laughs> Nobody knew where the Sydney Mines everywhere. was. The, yeah, it was quite something. And, and for, to that mind, uh, we should all remember that Penny Hadfield was the production designer. And I don't know if you know this, but during the time of, of My Bloody Valentine, Penny and I, got together and we spent five years and nobody nobody on the caster crew knew that oh, yeah. oh yes oh yes you did <laughs> everybody knew so uh, <laughs> kathy kathy wolf just said that the locals loved us most made it into the movie i can tell you that the locals loved uh, at least when we were in the in the bar after after a, a shoot in the bar in, in the isle royale hotel that they Really liked Helen, Cindy, Gina, Lori. <laughs> we were <laughs> little crowds would form around our our, our table of local uh, local young lads that uh, were very interested. I remember they 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 didn't particularly like Gina's boots. They thought they were too hoity-toity sort of thing. Yeah, they, were, they came up in the way she had her. But they were saying, oh, she's not around from here, but uh, kind of like that anyway, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, and there, was, there was a lot of chess going out whenever, uh, whenever we stepped into the bar with all those young women. Holy shit, look at this. Wow. The secret, there, there you go. Wow. What does the it secret. say? September what? September 13th, 1980? 1980, wow. yeah. Wow. And then, yeah. let's get to the Harriet song. That's the... <laughs> yeah, let's get to the Harriet song. <laughs> Page two. Page Sydney two. Mines. Sydney Mines. Wow. Cover sets. Oh, my God, did we have cover sets. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, so I have, the, I, have the, I, I have the shooting schedule. Eh. <laughs> oh, excuse excuse me. Me. Uh, <laughs> the last page is not there. The last page is scene 105. And what does it say? Oh, you froze up, Robbie. Oh, there you are. No. TJ attempts to escape, but the miner takes a firm grip on him. There was no scene 106 because we wanted to keep it. We kept it from you guys all the way yeah. through. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. nobody knew. That's, I mean, that was the, that was the secret. And I, I mentioned yeah, in the comments, I, I mentioned in the comments before, um, uh, before I was allowed into your hallowed halls here, <laughs> that, um, uh, one of the things that, I don't know if you remember this, Peter, but in the coaching of your movements, one of the things that we had stressed to your coach was make sure he doesn't walk or move like anybody, like anybody. He's he can't look like T. He can't walk like TJ. He can't walk like he's got to he's got to have his own look. So nobody will ever figure out. Oh my God! Yeah, no, no, that's TJ. He walks like that. Yeah, yeah. Was that was that not the case that yeah you yeah, were supposed to not be anybody. 
anybody. Yeah. That's why mo- that's why all of the the men, uh, for the most part, were about six foot, five eleven, six foot. We were all the same, we were all the same height, same body structure. Right. But we were younger and not as heavy as we are now. <laughs> except except for Tom Kovach, who was who was six four at the time. Yeah. yeah but as you can see, yeah. he's only since then. Yeah, yeah. But all he was, that skydiving. He was a lover, not, not no, a fighter. I, Tom and Keith were hired for their acting ability. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Guys, can I suggest that seeing as how there's so many, there's so few of us, and Kathy Wolf has been hanging out, and she's full of a plethora of thoughts as well. Is it wrong for me on. to say, should we bring her on too? Please. Can we send her the link? We, uh, send her, we send need, her a link. Uh, we need an email for her. Uh, uh, I'm I'm looking, an email. I think it. I'll tell you what her email is. Hold on a second. Uh oh. <laughs> Can you send it in the private Bob, chat? Did you just, I'll, send yep. it in private yeah, message. Send, send it in the private chat and I'll send yeah, it. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, what's well, happening? I, we're, we're efforting. I just want to say um, in, in answer to the, the question about working with the local folks down there, um, I just found the, 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 the actual mining people, the men and the women who, who I met who had been mining people for years were amongst some of the most extraordinary people I've ever met in my life. Beautiful. It's, uh, I remember the, the first day, you, you guys remember this, they sent us down to the 22nd Colliery in Great Place Bay to go down in a working mine. This is before we started shooting. And I remember walking up to a group of miners when we got to the, the pit head, walk, and they were doing some work there. There were about three or four of them. And I wandered up. And of course, they heard that there were these acting movie people coming in to visit. I'm sure they'd been briefed. Anyway, I walked up and I just sort of introduced myself and I said, hi, how do you do? And they were polite, but you know, sort of like checking me out, what do we got here? kind of thing. And uh, so I just, the biggest guy who seemed to be in charge, I said, uh, so uh, tell me, have have you worked in the mine long, a long time? And <laughs> I saw the other miners beside him start to go. <laughs> they all made faces and just sort of like, I felt like I'd taken my foot and jammed it right in my mouth. And the guy just turned, sort of looked at me, he said, I've been 40 years underground, boy. <laughs> and I went, oh. <laughs> sort of like, I get it. And, uh, you know, it was all there, and just the way he said it, you know, the whole life that these guys had put in, and not in, not the miners, too. You know, so uh, I the, I still remember that moment. That was hey, where Kathy. I what they were about uh, as, as people. Cape Breton is a fine place filled with some really, really good people. That's all I have to say. Hey, hey. Kathy, we're getting an um, echo from you. Can you turn your volume down a little bit? You know, the whole. We're getting some echo from Kathy. Yeah. Oh, from Kathy. Yeah. Oh, oh. She'll, no, I'll try again in just a second. Um, She's just adjusted. Hey, I had a question for you, Neil. Uh, the shot where you're revealed as the killer, I mean, your eyes look insane in that shot. Did you do anything to to achieve that look, or is that just uh, <laughs> acting? <laughs> no, it was just another day at the office for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. We actually shot the reveal scenes in Montreal uh, a month or two after. Um, uh, it was a it was a day or two at, at the office because if I'm not mistaken, we shot that at the Cinepix office. I could be in, in the back garage. We built just the little opening of the uh, of the the mine shaft where he puts his hand through and says, "Have lunch" and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it was at the office. That was the look that uh, that Neil had every time when he was as soon as he got off camera. <laughs> well, um, probably a number of people have said that, that they were really uh they found it striking i do remember george that's uh, 
said something to me there. He in, in the he shout out to his directorial skills that put me there. But I, I you know. There are a lot of scenes that I cringe a bit to look at nowadays. What? No. That, um, eh, you know. You know. But they we was good. We were kids. It was Neil, what what else had you done? And Neil and I went to theater school together. Right, Neil? We were at the dome. Yeah, oh yeah. Along and so was Peter. Uh, it was uh, Peter, yeah. Um Rob. Rob too. Oh Rob, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah we were yeah. all Theater school. Uh, Carl, Carl, Carl. Yeah. But Neil, but, was this your first job? Oh. No, it wasn't his first job. No. I'll tell you whose first job it was. It was Helen's and Rob's and Tomas's in yeah. Pinball Summer. Who That's was the right. doofus who yes. put them in that? That's right. <laughs> That's right. But but to, but Neil, this was not Neil's first job. Was I it? been on another film, uh, a very big. Uh, film before that in Toronto oh. called uh, what was it called now? Um, scanners was what did you do? Well, I did a day on scanners. I did a, a little bit of day work. I did a, a film in French called La Ferte Coffin. In which it wasn't the, gas, was it? Or something? No, oh, I did oh, something. Coffee, the, the, uh, the film I did in Toronto, but I, I got I got my I got fired from basically for incompetence. Um, <laughs> That's why we hired them. And they, and Bob and, uh, and George said, "Okay, we gotta we gotta hire this guy right now. He comes highly recommended." <laughs> <laughs> True story. Oh, <laughs> amazing. What was the film that you got fired from? Now I have. I'm to trying know. to remember the name. It was about the. Um, uh, Mooney cult. Uh, right. Oh. Everybody must remember that one. Robert <laughs> Cooper produced it. Yeah, it was a great film, brilliant film. And they gave me a, a really good role as a guy who was supposed to be scary. And I couldn't get a word out of my mouth. Je figé. <laughs> you know, those of you who know in French know the term. Je figé. I froze up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I couldn't get the words out of my mouth. Wow. If they heard that, Presner and Mahalka said, we got to get that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, no, it was, uh, it, it, actually, I shouldn't be so glib about it. It was great that the, that, uh, the Montreal folks, uh, Bob and George and all, and uh, Steve, uh, Steve Miller, too, um, did give me, because they'd heard, a, you know, it's a small Small world. They'd heard that I kind of done a face plant on uh, the Mooney film, but they still sort of trusted me enough to figure, well, what the heck? We'll give this this kid a shot. Yeah. And they've regretted it ever since. But, you know. That, that's one of the things that I'm probably most proud of is that because um, uh, I'm I'm certainly a lot younger than all of you, and um, what what has <laughs> led me to believe that is if you treat your elders kindly. Uh, they will remember you as you get older, and then they die off. You see, and you, and you're left holding the bag. But I, uh, my 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 greatest um, memories are of the people that came to me off the street and said, you know, I was a production manager at the time. Uh, you know, I'd like to get in the movie business, and I say, okay. So uh, if I call you, you've got to show up within 30 minutes, and uh, you'll have a job. And that happened time and time again. And then the kid from the university who came to me and said, "You know, I, I'd I'd like to I'd like to get into the film business." I said, "Well, you know, uh, what have you been doing?" He says, "Well, I was at university." And I said, "Well, what do you want to do?" <laughs> I remember this one kid who said to me, "You know, I, I'd sort of I'd like to I'd like to start off directing and see where it goes from there." <laughs> and I said to him, "Can you drive a fucking truck?" And, and I never hired him. What can I tell you? But I, I really did not only not only from from your the acting group, but Kathy Wolf. Kathy Wolf was the the head scenic in Montreal at the tender age of twenty three. She was the best scenic painter around, and she developed us a, a small case of I'm allergic to paint. I swear to God, that's the truth. Oh, wow. And she came around, yeah. and somehow she became my my production assistant, then the assistant production manager, and then she became a production manager. She kept following around. I couldn't I couldn't shake her. And then when I was a bonder, 
she was the, the line producer on shows, and she would call me and say, uh, we got some trouble on this picture. Can you come and help? I know I'd walk in like a big hero, and she'd go, Lottie Dow, hi, Bob. What are you doing here? And uh, I would go in and, and, and save the movie. What can I tell you? Uh, so yes. she's, she's smiling with recognition here. Aw, that's awesome. Well, uh, hello, Kathy. Thank you for, <laughs> for being able to pop in. Appreciate yeah. you stopping in, Kathy. Thank you. Well, yeah. one of the things I wanted to join in, I got to work with John Dunning yeah. at 19. Oh. Here's, I'm 19 years old when we made this movie. I was the youngest one there. Wow. No, I was younger. Oh, than hell then. Well, yeah, no, it's, that's. Anyways, you're gorgeous. Oh, my she God. Was 16. Girl. <laughs> but John 17 they were all <laughs> minors they were all we minors, were minors. All minors. <laughs> but all through John's or, career okay. he had pieces from my bloody valentine extra fingers or whatever in jars and formaldehyde on his desk <laughs> really? like real fingers no the ones that we imported I was importing all the body parts and the first time they shipped up Mabel, who was, you know, was opened at the chest and, you know, the heart removed and put in a dryer for 25 hours. And the customs officer <laughs> opens up a coffin. It's a coffin. They don't even ship it in a box from LA. He's given early retirement. <laughs> From that point on, every coffin I brought up, they didn't open it. I could have brought anything into Canada. <laughs> they, they shipped your heart in a big coffin? They shipped all of the body parts and the bodies in coffin. And I had to bring it into Canada. <laughs> oh, my. That's amazing. Arden Rushpan <laughs> thinks that the film Neil was thinking of was Ticket to Heaven. Thank That's you. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. That was, uh, that one. that was it. Yeah. Arden. Yeah. Thank you, Arden. Thanks for stepping well, in. Arden, no, she's an inside. Oh, she's ticket to heaven. Out. Yeah. 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 Uh, Arden, Arden's another one that I picked up off the street. Now, she came from good pedigree because her mom was running actor at the time, lovely Virginia. And uh, I think we had worked uh, uh, on Pinball Summer together and also on um, the picture with uh, was it Keeping Track with Pierre Sarazen and Margot Kidder? I think that might have been your first gig. And Arden and I went to high school together, Westmount High, that Kamala Harris went to. Yes, ma'am. And uh, what's his name? Our famous, our famous, uh, our famous uh, musician, geez, Louise. Brian Adams. <laughs> uh, no, 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 more famous. Than that. Uh, he died recently. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, Nicole Cohen. Uh, oh, Leonard, Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen. Cohen. Yeah. 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 Just about, about my high school. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Well, uh, also, uh, some of you went to school with our founder, Suze Romero. Can any of you talk about that? George? No, Susan. Su uh, oh. Neil, you. Oh. Yes, is, I, I knew her as uh, Suzanne de Roche. Yeah, Suzanne de Roche. I, long I knew her as I knew her as as Rock. As Rock. Okay. What? Yeah. Uh -huh. Please explain. La Roche. <laughs> and she was she was, um, long story. Um, <laughs> Suzanne was played. Uh, played opposite me and as you like it as I played Orlando um, and because Matt Berman was supposed to play Orlando but Matt Berman went to Hollywood to do a stunt for the Rockford Files so they had to recast Orlando and I ended up as a first year during the third year production, and Peter saved me, as did a whole bunch of others, because I didn't know how to read Shakespeare. <clears throat> but long story short, um, Matt ended up directing my movie, which 
starred or uh, co-starred <coughs> George, and George was in my film, and so there's sort of like a relationship there because George uh, did my movie and Suzanne played Celia to my Orlando and yada, 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 yada. So I, it's kind of a beautiful. Uh, Circle of life is what you're looking for. Circle thank of life. You, thank you, beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Circle of life. Uh, yeah, Suzanne. Yay. Suzanne was one of our Peters, Tom's, and Elaine's uh, students at the Dome Theater School in Montreal. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was our my first stunt fight was with you because I played Charles the wrestler. That's right, you did. And we had. <laughs> I beat I just, the shit oh. out of you. Yeah, he broke my elbow. <laughs> he broke my elbow. Really? Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> Did I really? Yeah. Oh. Remember I had remember I had a hockey uh a hockey uh, elbow pad on my elbow and oh, I geez. I spray painted it to look medieval. But yeah, I, I, I broke it. I, I was broken my elbow at that time. Yeah. I, I was just learning my craft. Yeah. We were already there. I was just learning. And Thankfully, and I have to throw this out there because Colm Fior, who is a big Canadian star, met with me every single night after rehearsal of As You Like It to tell me what the fuck I was saying. He had no idea. No idea. And we would meet at Beauty's, at Beauty's Diner in Montreal and he would go, okay, what happened today at the rehearsal? I go, I don't know. <laughs> we did. And he goes, okay, here's what you were saying. And he would break it down into layman's English. And I was able to understand it because Shakespeare does not roll trippingly off my tongue. <laughs> for sure. But <laughs> occurring to me, you know. One of the beautiful things about this cast is that we were, uh, we were it, a lot of us, although Tom comes from left field in a way because he didn't go to theater school with us, um, but, uh, but we love you anyway. And Jim, <laughs> did you go to school with us or not? Jim? No, I was, I was going to John Abbott. Oh, you were uh, John Abbott. And actually Suzanne school. left the dome and came to John Abbott. She was the year behind me at John Abbott. So I also, no, Suzanne. Um, but I had gone to John Abbott. I had done while you were shooting pinball. I was shooting the much bigger budget crap show called Crunch, which was a horrible <laughs> oh, film. That's right, you were famous and too, Jim. So I had a really. Uh, I was uh, just. I was before the credits in that film, just behind. John Vernon, Norman Fell, and Robert Forster, and then and introducing the cast of City High, which started with uh, Mike McKeever, who was called Kimberly McKeever back then, I and then me, McKeever. and right, Wait, and then they introduced Johnson, which included Matt with? Berman. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> Matt Berman was listed then as the the. The uh, I was Johnson High. He was in City. Uh, no, Matt Berman was in, in in my school too. Johnson High. He he played uh, Anthony Sherwood and and Matt were Blunt and Holvac, and I can't remember which one was which right now. <laughs> but um, we used Steadicam in that film to no effect whatsoever. We had all <laughs> sorts of gags to no effect whatsoever. We had, uh, and, and the director, Mark Warren, had been uh, working on, uh, uh, he had done the last two years of laughing. So he would wow. all set up the gags. Set up the gag, set up the gag. Unlike George, who said, here's the story, here's the story, here's the story. There are so many precursors and MacGuffins. Uh, MacGuffin, for, for you that don't know, is Cockney rhyming slang for nothings. Like hints that, like when 
when uh, when Rob picks up Elaine the same way that the miner does to hint that he might be the killer when Carl and I are turning all the hearts upside down to hint that we might have done Mabel uh, when uh, and here's something Jack Geller he's a guy that I signed something for in our first in in Jersey uh, posted earlier so I know he's on he gave he put a little he put he had the, he came with this poster and it was covered with post-it notes of what he wanted each character to say and where he wanted them to put it on the poster. <laughs> and I looked at what he wanted me to say, and it was, Jack, you're looking pretty good, baby face. Jim Murchison, Tommy Whitcomb. And I'm going like, I didn't remember I said that line, but that was another precursor to just before uh, Carl as Dave getting his face boiled and absolutely destroyed. So, right. I mean, all of these things were so thought out by, by John Baird and the idea of the film and the idea of the working class thing. Uh, now, I, after I did uh, Crunch, which was your competition, uh, mm -hmm. and you absolutely blew us out of the water, uh, in pinball summer. Pinball summer is so famous. Everyone knows that movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just a better film. It was way better. It was a great. A, like, we had like we had a three and a half million dollar budget, and you guys had what seven hundred and fifty thousand. Seven hundred fifty. Your film plus was funny or not? Seven hundred fifty thousand, yeah. and then and then we had to throw a little bit more because our executive producer had decided to use the Beach Boys uh, medley for the uh, the Ferris oh. wheel theme and uh the manager of the beach boys called up one day and about uh three days before you're we about to do the final mix in the lock and said oh by the way uh i noticed you just got the uh the rights to use this little medley uh you know there's two kinds of rights there's the mechanical rights and there's the straight royalties thank you for the mechanical rights now that'll be another 10 grand for the <laughs> and 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 so the producers jack murphy and and fred had to put a little bit more money into finishing it but it was a, it was i mean what we did on 750 we made the movie for 750 grand actually the movie now can wow. be thought i want people to see that movie because i absolutely love that movie like i revisit that movie and i realize what a what a what a piece of artwork it is actually i think it really is i think it's an under under valued movie what is it now you would find it under the pickup summer now or pin pick, pick up pick up summer in the states pick yeah, up pick summer up. at george mahalka i i wanted to say this you guys you know what what is unusual about us so that people know is that we do we are all we come from a small town really a lot of us come from montreal and it's that small town feeling that you know that love that we have for each other that montreal thing that we carry with us really i think that mm -hmm. like that really you know this was our this was our university this was our frat house this was our you know this was our we just we just uh you know because i've lived so far so long from from montreal I've lived in Los Angeles m most of my life, actually now. But but I go back to Montreal and I come back to you guys to get that 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 feeling that we have with each other. That and that's is why I'm not at my home in Ottawa. I'm here in Quebec, in Graceville, so Quebec. Go. Yeah, 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 but just I mean, so I, we can be represented, Quebec. People do. <laughs> but do uh, wonder. no, it was okay. it was very very funny because. Uh, I mean, uh, here I was, uh, I'd done this film that was supposed to be, originally Eugene Levy was the writer. He took his name off of it. Uh, they just kept, they, they had no actual investment in the young actors. Whereas George, except for not wanting us to know who the killer was because it might give it away, had total investment in us and let us pretty much do what we wanted. It was kind yeah. of like, unless you had a kill scene, you were just carrying forward from what we were doing in our off hours. Yes. We were, <laughs> we were going to the pool hall. We were doing all that, all that yeah. stuff. Matt wanted me to bring up this story. The first time I saw 
pickup summer, which was then called Pinball Summer, was with Elaine, Rob, Tom, uh, and uh, was there Carl. anybody else that was in there? Carl. And, and Carl. Carl. At In Sydney Mines, while we were shooting <clears throat> My Bloody Valentine, we all went and watched Pinball Summer because it was playing in the theater. And the, and the, seeing, the, think, owner, the owner of the theater, the owner of the theater recognized me, Rob, Helen, and Carl, and uh, he let us in for free. <laughs> and after yeah. the movie was over, as we're walking out, suddenly we were surrounded by all the other people who were in the theater watching the movie with us asking for our yeah. autographs and we just yeah. oh, this is cool you see you see here here tom i only remember them recognizing you <laughs> i mean <laughs> I, I i think that you were the one that still looked a bit like the character uh, uh, uh rob had his short red hair and his little thing and uh, he didn't wear his little vest to the theater, but <laughs> or his, <laughs> his little vest, and, 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 and that's it. And Ellen looked very different too, but you looked looked like, like that guy. He, you were less, like less like Peter was the guy. You were the guy in that theater. I mean, most sure. of the, if, the, if they 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 knew who you were, and then they found out about the others. But they they said, "Hey, that's the guy." I want to. I just want to build on something that Helen said uh, about the small town ad, uh, aspect of all of us. We yeah. were in an English production center at Cinepix. Uh, um, uh, David Cronenberg was there. Uh, Ivan was there. Uh, English people in a f surrounded French town. Not that Cinepix didn't do French language movies. They did, uh, but but. It, it sort of felt like we were this little enclave, which made us even more. And I, I want to say to Helen, and I want to say to the other people from Montreal, that you can take the boy, this boy, out of, out of Montreal, move him to Toronto. But you also have to bring the Montreal bagels with you. Keep, keep them in the freezer. Yummy. Oh, my God. I'm so uh, Because, you know, and I, I'll, I'll do one more thing. Because of this COVID shite, uh, I've had to learn to do something really Montreal. You chat amongst yourself, and I'll I'll show it to you. In a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so while can I say something? Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Kathy. Okay. Now you guys have to know I live in Montreal still, and Bob's in Toronto. And every time I go there, even if I'm on the train, I have to go to Schwartz's, yes. buy him a full brisket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go to the same theater it has to be same theaters couple of dozen bagels and i'm wheeling in an extra cart of food just for bob <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because my friend xander's in, in montreal right now and he doesn't know about the good things let me write down the good things oh I i'll give you a tour guide book but i wanted to like <laughs> i worked with john dunning till uh, about a month before he passed away he rewrote. He wrote my bloody Valentine two. No kidding. A oh. new sequel. The sequel and not the remake. And not the remake. Wow. Lionsgate didn't want it, but he retained the rights to eleven original kills for all of you wow. guys. They were so disgusting. I would read the script, vomit. <laughs> Come back, read a few more pages. But what he also did was he commissioned the ballad of my bloody Valentine, the coolest song you ever heard. Wow. Lionsgate didn't want it. Hmm. But I'll send you all a copy of the ballad. Wow. Okay. I would yeah. love that. All right. Yeah. I just, and here, you've got our email. <laughs> one 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 last thing about Montreal is that because I can't get to Montreal where my daughter and my sister live, uh, because of the the COVID shite, um, I had to learn to make some. I can't make bagels. I get them shipped in, but I did learn to make Schwartz's Schwartz's oh. smoked meat. I I oh. make it myself. Oh. This came this came off my 
my smoker this morning. Wow. Wow. And, and, and it tastes fabulous. Anyway, so I'm oh. going to have to leave you because I have to go and eat my bagels and my thing. And wow. <laughs> I can Just to that. follow up on what Bob was saying, one of the really interesting things are, I'd forgotten about the shoot was that it was a pretty bilingual situation. Half the crew came from Montreal. Uh, Rodney Gibbons and his whole camera cinema cinematography unit Worked in French. Rodney yep. is from Wales, Great Britain, as far as I know. Spoke fluent French Canadian. Um, half the cast, I think, speaks some kind of French. Yeah. la première langue française. More, more, more than half. More than and half. Bob, you speak, you speak fluent French. So did George. Yeah. Um, and Robbie, I think you spoke French. Jim, I know you understand it. I know your kids are, are fluent. <laughs> je comprends, mais je, je suis un tête carrée. I said, no. Je, je, je... <laughs> yeah. And uh, Tommy Kovacs, <laughs> at last, at last. Je connais fran français, je, je sais pas. Right, Tommy? How many sorry, languages? I didn't, I didn't hear you. Uh, You're up to about 14 languages right now that you speak, right? More like 26. 26. What? Really? Yeah, but working, but you guys, <laughs> working with, with, it, sometimes George would he'd be working with us in English and stop, he'd say something in French to one of the crew. So that, yeah, that reminds me. So uh, my language is, uh, is Hungarian is one of them because yeah. my parents were Hungarian and George is Hungarian as well. Sure. So I have a small little story about how we were down on the mine sitting in one of the carts with other mine, with the miners heading somewhere uh, in the mine and George felt very relaxed and he put his arms around two other miners as, as we were moving. And I just thought they, they, to my, from my point of view, they looked a bit uncomfortable with his arms around them, right? Or he didn't have his arm on their shoulders, but he had his arms behind them. Oh. So in Hungarian, I said to him, I don't think they want your arms behind them. And so he just, he heard me and he went, <laughs> so, <you> know, just... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! That's so let, me you got say, let me just say that there's a gal by the name of Trinidad Burgos who said my girlfriend and I are actually renting a movie theater for Valentine's Day, and I'm excited to say we are screening My Bloody Valentine. Wow. Jesus, wow. Yeah. wow! Where is this? <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. Justin, so, Justin Adams wrote cooking tips. Also, what a treat! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kathy, oh, so there, Rob. Yeah. Uh, what? I I was I am since I've been here in Ottawa, I hooked yeah. up with somebody. They had they were the head of Zed Films. And there was a couple that was getting married, and and uh, the uh, the the gentleman that ran Zed Films also owned the Mayflower Theater, and he found out because I had been in contact with him that this couple, for their wedding gift, were getting an original copy of My Bloody Valentine streamed for them at the Mayflower Theater, and he contacted me and said. Could you come in and just say hi and say a few oh words my God. about the film? So that I was a wedding gift. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, and you're a hell of a wedding gift. I mean, I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> if there was any wedding gift out there, Tim Murchison would be the top of my list. All Here's right. my gift. Jim Murchison. <laughs> with love guys off topic really quickly is beauty still open in montreal uh, oh no. i don't know no. oh, okay. what's opened uh if they're doing takeout because that's all we can do here uh we're in a complete shutdown in montreal yeah you guys have a a, a, a curf, a curfew currently, right? Eight o'clock curfew, which doesn't matter because I don't go out after eight. <laughs> <laughs> There's nowhere to go. You can. <laughs> How I can that? tell you, most of, most of our cast in that hotel were in bed together before eight. I'm sure. I, 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 it was happening all the time. 
<laughs> uh, no, but I'll speak for yourself. Some of us. Rob just... and I know nothing about that. We. Tr <laughs> As much as you tried. We, Rob and I have talked about how naive we were. <laughs> hey, Trinidad just said, funny you mentioned that. I planned on giving a promise ring to her during the screening. Oh. Oh, wow. Girl, People are getting that. married to our movie, guys. Oh, well, nice. <laughs> um, ah. Yeah. And they say romance is dead. Might <laughs> not be dead, but we'll kill it. <laughs> if it moves, we'll kill it. <laughs> hey, Kathy, uh, you, you joined us late, obviously, but thank you for coming. There was already a question asked for you. Um, let me pull it up here. It says you worked on low-budget films like My Bloody Valentine and then a massive summer tentpole film like Some of All Fears, which presented more challenges. Yeah. Well, when you're working on a low budget film, like we did in Cape Breton, we had, I think, a million dollars? Well, three, three three and a half. Three and a half million. Yeah, which was oh, nothing. that was low? Oh, okay. Versus an $80 million movie. I was offered to do the, the uh, line producer on the main unit, and I chose the second unit to hang out with 900 stunt guys, including the Montreal Alouettes that I convinced oh, to be in it, the Toronto Argonauts. Wow. Every stunt guy in the city, 900 men and me. <laughs> Hardship, I, I had all the money I needed. It was actually easier than my bloody Valentine in a sense, because on bloody Valentine, I'm alone in the office. You guys are all on set. And I'm yeah. trying to get this stuff over the border. And I imported more blood in Canada <laughs> than any other production coordinator. I, I actually held the, I did my um, happy birthday to me right after my bloody Valentine. And I don't know how many gallons I imported. I deserve an award. <laughs> <laughs> Is that real blood thing? That was real blood? We uh, what was it called? It was called K4 or something? Yeah, we got it from the Berman Brothers. From the and Berman Brothers. Oh, okay. oh, I see. I see. And you know, two years, two years, two years after uh, um, Kenny Diaz did our movie, I think it was two or three years after he won an Academy Award for best um, uh, prosthetic makeup. Wow. Uh, you remember Kenny? I mean, Kenny worked on all of you. The guy, he had a beard. He looked, yeah, he looked well, like Matt, except a little chumpier. <laughs> oh, now he looks like Kenny. Yes, there you go. <laughs> I remember that. I remember Kenny would always have like a pot of blood boiling on a hot plate, and particularly the night That's of right. happy scene. We were getting ready to shoot the party scene, and we were all sitting uh, together in uh, where uh, in the part of the of the mine uh, sort of room where where. Uh, across from where Happy's scene was shooting, so I remember Jack was walking around, and he had the prosthetics in with the uh, with, uh, the, with the eye coming out of his eye and the eyeball hanging. And I was like, "Oh, hi, Jack. You know, uh, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> you know, you <laughs> look a little rough." Uh, and, uh, and then, and then uh, a prop guy would walk around pulling his prosthetic body. <laughs> uh, Kenny was had all this blood boiling on this hot plate. I'm sitting between Elen and Gina, and they cut the lights because they have to do a reversal and they can't see the light cut, but they forgot to radio us to that. And I just remember that was the moment I found out how absolutely long Helen and you and Gina's nails were because they both <laughs> dug into either forearm and there was a scream. Uh, Ellen was hired for her scream, actually. Yeah, that's right. So my ear, my eardrums were ringing, and my and my forearms didn't quite, and we didn't quite cut blood, but it was as close to it as I wanted to get. Uh, it was, uh, it was, it was remarkable because I didn't have any death scenes, so I never actually uh, had to to go through any of that. Well, but, speaking, uh, the the, speaking the, the of, uh... feeling was all around you. 
So speaking of all that blood that you imported, the scene where uh, Harry is exposed in the mine and where the miners come in and, and rescue him and he's, he's cannibalizing an arm, uh, that was done in two. Uh, and the blood uh, that was being put into my mouth through a little kind of a ketchup dispenser was left on the sun uh, room of one of the uh, outbuildings. And the next time we came in, they shot this blood the next day into my mouth, and I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the look that George wanted when they found uh, Harry. <laughs> Cheer, <laughs> horror. <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> we lost you in that last second. No, no oh. sound. Peter, what happened to your sound? Can you hear us? No. Oh. Well, somebody yeah. text say, uh, he doesn't look uh -huh. muted. No, he's not. He pulled out his, <laughs> his lead. <laughs> wow, that's weird. Yeah. Well, we'll keep working we on it. Here. Yeah. How's everybody dealing with this darned pandemonium situation? I tell you, I'm getting tired of it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're all well. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're crazy. I could just sit here and chat to you guys all day. This is the most entertainment I've had in a while. I <laughs> yeah, I'm in my house in Los Angeles, so now I'm wrapped and I got my hood on because I'm cold here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a Vasis Das? Well, it's Do you have a Vasis Das today? No Vasis Das today, no. We had to shut it down for COVID. The last one I did uh, was in uh, November, end of November, and I think we'll start again in April. But no, no, no front yard show today. Okay. Hey, Eric and Matt. Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you have anything to say? Do you have any questions? <laughs> oh, wait, we're still here? <laughs> You're just oh. sitting there listening. I've got Eric, Matt, I, I forgot to tell you that these people are terribly shy, introverted, and you'll never get them to start up, let alone. Uh, I'm telling you, this is, the, this is the hardest hosting job we've had since we started this show. No, it, this has been the easiest 217, I tell you. We don't uh, think I'm, we've no, I'm. <laughs> I'm just, I, I think like, just like Eric, I'm sitting here and enjoying it. And, uh -huh. and I kind of knew that coming in. And we, when we got together last week, just to kind of run through everything, we got a, a little bit of a, a preview for it. I mean, I was, <laughs> I don't want to say warned, but I, I knew, you know, Bob and Sandy <laughs> said, these guys are going to get together and just go. Oh. And, <laughs> and I think, I think it's fantastic that after 40 years, you guys are still friends. You still keep up with each other the the love and admiration you guys have for everyone has has shown through today um i you know watching the comments as you guys have been it's these guys are loving it and, well, and I, I just have to say that i'm really bummed that the actual love scene between me and sylvia never made it to the screen yeah <laughs> It was so good. It went on for three days and three nights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh Thank you God. for sharing it with me, though. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I like to watch. <laughs> well, there was a lot to see, but I'm sorry. It never made it I'm sorry screen. you guys never saw it, that wonderful oh, love that we cut oh. To smithereens, it's one of the lost moments of my bloody Valentine. Yeah, it was smoke. Our love remains, so you know. Yeah. I, I want to say something to all of those people who aren't on this screen, because so what we did forty years ago was it? Was it yeah. really forty years yeah. ago? Forty years yeah. ago. What we did forty years ago is we came out of Montreal. We went to a town. We didn't have a script on the third of June when Stephen Miller got. Uh, a five-pager to John Dunning. John Dunning got a five-pager to Frank Mancuso Jr., who was the head of Paramount at the time. Frank said, "Get a script written, and let's see if we can do it." And it's got to be, it's got to be on the screens on Friday the thirteenth of 1981. Yeah. And this was June June third. By July fifteenth, we had a, a draft. We would sit around the table just to give you a little background of how it was written. George Rodney, 
they were writing partners, myself, John Beard, John Dunning, and I think Irene Latinsky, who was uh, John's executive assistant, taking copious notes. We would spend the morning. Okay, so he here's what we'll do. Um, okay, so how about like Alf gets to the top of the, he's climbing up and then you have the noose and the noose goes around his neck and he falls and he plummets right in front of, who did he fall in front of? I can't remember the woman. And uh, his eyes like bulge and she looks and she screams, what else can we do? And George, or I don't know who it was said, what if slowly his body separates from his head and he's just left hanging there just then. Oh, that's fantastic. John would go back to the motel, which was just down the street from Sydney Picks. He'd write the scenes. He'd come back. He was a brilliant professional, great writer. He'd come back the next morning and he'd, he'd give us the pages and we said, oh, that's terrific. Okay, so who do we kill now? Okay, what about Sylvie? Sylvie, Sylvie's got to, okay, listen, here's the deal. And, the, and we, we came up, John, I think John came up with the gag where where Rob picks her up and and mimics what the killer does a little later on, but then the idea is okay. So the killer comes and he's in the shower and all these guys and you've been in the shower before and you see it, but there's just a copper tube and he takes the and he just jams her head right against the copper tube, <laughs> and it's horrible and she's just hanging there and and George says yeah but it's not enough and Rodney says. Well, what if, what if like the water comes out of her mouth? And then John Beard says, well, yeah, it comes out of her mouth. And then it turns red because it's now blood coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah it's fantastic. And John would walk back to the motel, which was very close to the, the office, write the scene, come back. The night, and we kept killing people day after day until we had a script. And meantime, some of us had to go and find a mine that would allow us to shoot as as Rob said, a couple a mile underground, under the ocean, uh, and and I had to convince the deputy prime minister of Nova Scotia that this was going to be a job enhancing thing if he could give us the mine and the miners and the trains and let us shoot underground in what was in effect a death trap of methane gas. But we didn't Absolutely. want the we didn't want the canaries to know. We the canaries, you know, canaries are a dime a dozen. They're just actors. As Alfred Hitchcock once said, you know, is it true, Mr. Hitchcock, that you said that all actors and actresses are cattle? And he said, well, no, I might have said that all actresses and actors should be treated like cattle. So anyway, so <laughs> we let the canaries down. We got the mine. We went to the town, this mookie looking mine. I love it. We, 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 we looked at this mine. Chaba looks at this fantastic place. It is dirty. It's gringy. We come back three and a half weeks later to get ready to start shooting. They painted the whole mine because it looked dirty and they wanted it to look really nice for when the movie people came and we had to re repaint the whole, the whole mine. So, oh so we just got there and we were doing our utmost to make a, a wonderful film. We didn't know how wonderful it would turn out. We knew that we were giving it everything. We were young. Uh, I don't know how old I was, but I was younger than I am now. Um, 40 years and younger. For, 40, 40 years younger. Yeah. I was, I was 35. God damn. How did that happen? So uh, we, uh, and, and, What's been heartfelt for me over these years is how many of you fans out there love what we did to yeah. this very day. Yeah. And I think that what Matt and Eric were saying about, oh, yeah, we're just sitting back and watching you guys love each other. It's because we do and we did mm -hmm. and we still do. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. just like it's a joy for me having been shunted off to the side because I wasn't important enough to be on this first show until you know somebody no. died and no 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 that's okay I I don't harbor any ill feelings I promise you I'm I'm for just long. a for long I, I'm <laughs> for long. anyway I just wanted to tell you that for the fans out there who have loved what we did we we love doing it for ourselves and for each other and and to this very day we you're you're absolutely right in what we have for each other which is something very special and, and i don't think it's ever happened on any other movie that uh, i've ever worked on yeah. justin adams just no said, justin adams just said that his favorite death scene <laughs> is sylvia sylvia's of course. death scene yeah finally someone yeah. <laughs> Justin Adams just Mine wrote too. that. That's the signature death scene of that Wait, film. I don't know about yeah. the speed films thing that you're doing, Neil, but a couple people want to know about your next project. Can you talk about it for a second? Uh, my next project. Well, I'm I'm directing 
I, I work in animation too, animated film, I, most of the career. I started acting again about, uh, oh, maybe four or five years ago when I was be between jobs and animation. We actually met in an audition. A lot of character work as, and then I joined I joined the union again. <laughs> the work stops on the die. Uh, and the came by. I'm currently directing a um, uh, kids animated project for a Toronto company. Uh, and um, I uh, have been sent a script from a gentleman in the American Midwest who wants to do a horror film. Uh, that's Got all. It can say and then there's a may another maybe project but going on but you know uh, it's everything is up in the air given the, the situation right now uh, right and i'm sure this applies to you guys as well yeah you know where everybody wants to work and uh, do really cool stuff and uh, and we will again but right now us we're in suspended animation for better i mean Stuff is happening. Ellen, it sounds like you're working in LA. Yeah, I was going to say, everybody's sneakier in LA. In, oh, in, okay. In All right. US, we find ways to get it done. In fact, I haven't been this busy for a long time, and I'm so grateful. Thank you. Really, for yeah? And all horror movies, by the way. So thank you, my bloody Valentine. Right. Yeah. Keeping my career going because, uh, you know, it's a, it's horror film after horror film. But, but yeah, no, for for, uh, for me in the States, uh, I did have a film in, in England uh, called uh, The Haunting of Lady Jane that was supposed to be shooting now, and it won't be shooting until uh, October. Um, but pretty much everything else has been staying on schedule, and we've been, you know, I we're not as in the kind of lockdown that you guys are in in Los Angeles, never have been, and maybe that's the problem, but, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're doing outdoor dining right now, which is absolutely insane, but that's what we're doing, you know. So. Well, well, yeah. Could I could I just jump in and tell you that Justin Adams s reminds us all that Neil worked on the Simpsons on the yeah. Simpsons yes, he and did. I, and and says I remember one of his episodes Lisa finds the bones of an angel that was yours Neil wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to remember. I think that was the f no, that was the second one I directed. Yeah, I was watching. I spent ten seasons on the Simpsons. Uh, going from one year to the next to the next and slowly working my way up the food chain to the point where I got to direct uh, about seven episodes before. And, oh, uh, God, I look back on it, and when that was happening, I just took it for granted um, that, uh, oh, this is what happens. You go to L.A., you go to film school. <laughs> and, but I look back on it now, Bob, and it's like, Jesus Christ. Was I ever a lucky, lucky schmo from Montreal? No, you're oh. uber talented. Mm -hmm. And uber that's talented. why. Tell here's, us the thing. here's the thing, Rob. I was completely, not completely, I was pretty unqualified for the work on The Simpsons when I was started. I was working with some unbelievably talented people from the top animation school in the world, Cal Arts. That's where most of my confreres trained. And uh, I had a background in animation from the National Film Board of Canada. But with, it's completely different, completely different aesthetic from commercial animation. So I got really, really I lucky. have to interject here. You're being far too modest. Did you not win the Norman McLaren Award? Like Norman McLaren was one of the premier animators in Canadian film history. And um, you won the award named after him, did you not? Uh, in at the advice of my attorney, Senator, I refused to answer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was like, you know what? So you here's know the what thing: there's a there's a connection in all of that. In that Neil, well, Neil and I, uh, despite him having been imposed living with me for two years when he first uh, came to Toronto, he still decided that he wanted to model a character on The Simpsons after me. Oh, yeah. And okay. so he had heard that I had been a croupier, which is a blackjack or or crap stealer uh, in uh, in a, a travel in a traveling rogue casino. And so he asked me to send him some pictures and the stick boy crap dealer 
in the final scene of Viva Ned Flanders, where they go through all the Moody Blues tribute bands and come to the Moody Blues, uh, that says, you crapped out. That character is designed on this face. Yeah. Wow. Well, that. That's a big claim to Jim, you know what, Neil? <laughs> Neil. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Robbie. I just want to say that, you know, a lot of people say that you, I, I look back on my career, my voiceover career, and people say, oh, man, you were so lucky. And I say, you know what? Luck, the definition of luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's luck. But yes, children, that is absolutely true. There's no such thing as luck. It is, true. it is true because I never, I when I got into voiceovers, I never knew what a voiceover was. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I had a 14 year career signed to TNT for their entertainment department and their NBA department. And what? I, I had no idea that what I was doing was anywhere near anything that I had planned to do, but all of the years of training in acting and, and, and on camera had prepared me for the, for the right to compete for that job. And when I got that job, everybody goes, Oh my God, you're so fucking lucky. And I said, wait a second. I wasn't lucky. I just, yeah, I was lucky, but I was lucky because I was prepared. That's, to right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I, I think it's important that people know that luck has a lot to do with the hard work that you put in behind. Absolutely. And yeah. so for you, Neil, to say, oh, well, I just fell into this. You didn't fall into it. You were ready and you were, yeah. you were, you were primed. Yeah, to, to uh, nail that gig when you got it. Yeah, yeah. but, peop so but people, I, don't I would know. like to thank. I would like to thank Rob, Neil, and Elaine for illustrating to me that my complete lack of preparedness <laughs> led to the life I had. If I had only been a little more prepared, I oh, might have done. But I got my buddy Valentine, so and that was luck. So I'm happy. You can't take that away from me. <laughs> Uh, and, just, and not a not a lot of people know not a lot of people know that for all those years that Rob was doing voiceover, he was playing for the most part the part of a pantomime artist. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you will never work in this town again. <laughs> well, I love you never all. Work in this town again, <laughs> Jim. Jim. Yes. You went to uh, John Abbott Theater School? I did indeed. I was uh, thrown out of uh, the acting part of John Abbott Theater School. I <laughs> 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 ended up wait. working on my bloody Valentine for Bob Presner. <laughs> That's right. What year were you thrown out of, 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 of my bloody Valentine? I mean, of uh, John <laughs> Abbott Theater School. Sorry. Yeah, George Popovich scared the shit out of me. That was uh, back in 70s. He, he was a scary guy, as was Bob Ozores. Uh, I left for a year because of Bob Ozores. The guy would scream at us. I'm going, I'm not going to school anymore. Yeah. So, so George Popovich would do, this would be a, a typical direction from George Popovich. I, he's um what are you going to do I, you you have to do less sticky sticky stick and more picky picky puck <laughs> so i mean if if you were an actor that understood that you were pretty good <laughs> my greatest george popovich story we were doing the devils at jack theater and one of the props guys goes 
let's color some bananas brown and put it in the jailhouse bucket so that when they empty the bucket with the whatever, with the guy who's in jail, it'll go plop, plop, right? George hits right. the roof. If you need such cheap antics to make a scene work, you all fail as actors. He screamed at us for two hours. <laughs> That's oh, a wonderful. Yeah, no, um, do you remember? Do you, did you know Gaetan Charlebois? Gaetan Charlebois, yeah. So, uh, who's that? Yeah, he did this whole. George was a wonderful, wonderful performer in Bucharest and a, a kind of a legendary actor there, but he got to Canada and everything about Canada stunk. We didn't know the craft. We didn't know anything. So uh, yeah, he would, he would, he did this whole sort of soliloquy where he was performing rather than directing, where he talked of us as behaving. It would not fly in today's sort of me too, politically correct sort of, or you're crippled children. And he started doing these like grotesque sort of movements. You don't know your lives. You're crippled children. You are walking like not. And started doing all these grotesque things. It was yeah, pathetic. I, yeah, I obviously had enough charge. Don't tell us live show tonight, guys. Tom, you have a live show tonight? Uh, tomorrow, you, Sunday night. You every, do? Every Sunday night. Tell us about it quick. Uh, on Facebook Live, yeah. At my, okay. um, my how do we find page. how do we find it, Tom? Tell us how to find it and tell us about your song. Thomas, Didn't you get something released on Apple today yeah. or yesterday? Thomas Kovach uh, Music Facebook. Just search uh, for Thomas Kovach Music on Facebook, and you will find my page. And yes, he's I just, awesome. He's thank you. awesome. Spell and, it, though, Tom. Nobody knows how to say spell Kovach. Oh. Here's uh here's my latest release, my single. Can we see that? No, we can come forward a little bit. Oh, more. it's too uh too bright, huh? Too bright, yeah. How do you spell your name, sweet? K-O-V. Oh, there we are. That's my uh, latest single on Apple and on Spotify. You can get it there. Woo! Yeah. Yay! Awesome. And if you can make it to the show tonight, uh tomorrow night tomorrow at 7 30, 7 30 p.m. Eastern time. I'll wow. be good to see you there. Thanks for asking, Helen. Wow. Yes. Well, a fan wanted to know. And I'm just going to slip in and then give it to the boys again. I got kicked out of the Dome Theater School, by the way. Guys. <laughs> I got kicked we out. had a... We had a habit of hiring anyone who had been fired, kicked <laughs> out, got dumped. <laughs> Kathy Wolf, Helen UD, Neil, uh, 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 Jim uh, took a year off. Rob, <laughs> Rob, Jesus Christ. Why did you hang about? I got I got booted. <laughs> oh, thank God! So we were a hundred for a hundred. Perfect. Where do you get booted from, Robbie? Everybody loved you. The dome. What? Yes. Yeah, because the dome, the dome said, if you're prepared to take a job professionally, yes. then obviously you don't need us anymore. Yes, they were rude about it. Yeah, they were very rude. Uh, so, Victor Knight at the Dome Theater School said to me, "Well." You don't really need Shakespeare where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> and look where he is. And when and when Lor and when Laurie Hallier, who was God's gift to the lead actor in this movie, uh, came to us and and she was at the National Theater School, if I'm I'm remembering correctly. Yep. And what we what we didn't have to do, one, to convince her that the threats that were being made against her by the school. She'll never, she'll never learn in this institution again. To paraphrase yeah. Rob, they were threatening her if she took this job, and and we just said, you know, you're going to have a lead part in a movie for I don't know if you've heard of this company before, Paramount, right. and, they've, <laughs> and they've and they've promised us. 500 screens and if we do good while we're shooting it might get up like six seven hundred and she finally said yes she was great in the movie and uh, a day and date we opened uh, on the 11th of november uh, 11th of february and in the states and the 13th of february in canada and it opened in 1107 cinemas wow. and the only movie that had ever beaten that number was jaws that opened in 1300 cinemas 
a few wow. years earlier. So, so she did the right thing, and uh, she did. and uh, I'm sorry she's not with us today. She's yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll have her on the next two shows. I think Lori went back to theater school, though she was allowed back yeah, in it. That's right. Yes, because it was all bullshit. And we told her, yeah. you know what? That's what they're saying to scare you. But if yeah. you pass up the the role of a lifetime, the opportunity of a lifetime, th this kind of stuff doesn't come around every day. Exactly. And finally, she, she and finally she she. Now the other ones, like the people who have been with us on on Pinball Summer, like Ellen, says, yeah, whatever you want, you know, yeah, sure, no, I'll work for nothing, yeah, for sure. And, you know, <laughs> Rob, Rob Stein said, yeah, I, I drove a motorcycle. Can I drive a, drive a motorcycle again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like that I was studying to be an actor and I was being given opportunities to be an actor and I was supposed to turn it down. Like I was really aware. I'm like, this is backwards. This is so backwards. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, you know? the rebels make the movies. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. Peter, go ahead. Same, same. Uh, like after I was given permission because I think uh, uh, uh was a Jerome. Jérôme Tiberge. Right. Jerome, he was yeah. our master in school. Do you remember him, Rob? I yeah, remember, him. I remember him. He 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 vouched for me because I took fencing in high school, and he said, where, "Where did you learn how to do this?" And I said, "In high school." Oh, I know this guy. He's doing a movie, and maybe uh, you come with me and uh, show him your stuff. And that was my audition for George. But when I came back from my bloody Valentine. I was rode to the last day I left that school. I was held to such a high standard. Really? Oh, all because, you know, I had left to do a film and and uh, Victor Knight just rode me mercilessly. <laughs> yes. But what, the first person who hired me when I left theater school? Victor Knight. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. He yeah. hired you. I didn't even know he was, he, he what did he do? He, he directed a kind of a choral uh just uh, in the gymnasium of uh, Westmount High, we did a choral night. And I actually, I actually put together uh, the river from Bruce Springsteen and did as a poetry reading. Oh, but he, I said, why did you ride me for so many years? Uh, and I came back from the film. He said, I didn't want it to go to your head. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Nothing went to everybody's head. That's the lovely thing about this picture. Oh. Nothing went to ever, anyone's head. I think because you guys worked so hard for so long that you had no time to get puffed up. You you what? were just, everyone was an equal. Yeah. That's because we were fucking scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pussycat, eh? I can remember I can remember that there were, when we were shooting in Happy's bar there and there was some noise coming out about and George said hey we need quiet on the set and Bob was like I'd like to take care of that and he <laughs> went and grabbed up one of the prop pickaxes and he went to the door and there were a bunch of kids at the window and he goes you want to eat a pickaxe for lunch? And he came back and he was so excited that he had taken control of the situation. <laughs> Never happened, but I remember it well. No, no, I, sorry. But I, that, that I remember it well. Yeah, it was a okay. dream, yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, sign off. No, Tom. Yeah. Oh, Tom, thanks for I'm going to go. Stephanie. Thank you, Tom. Listen. I had such a blast uh, seeing you all and hearing all the stories again. And Matt and Eric, thank you so very much for putting this together. Thank you to all the fans thank who you. joined us in the comments uh, chat room. Yeah. And, um, yeah. We'll see you all again sometime soon. I am very, very sure of that. Tonight, 7.30 Eastern. Tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Toronto, New York time. Facebook Live, Thomas Kovach Music. Tom, we'll, yeah. share, we'll share the link. On yeah, we'll share it out. Ciao. Bye, Bye, Tom. Bye, Tom. Bye, Tom. Love you all. Bye. Love you. Too. Thank you, guys. I I'm think I have been a guest well. on the on the Tom Kovach show more than anyone else. I've been three times on that show, playing wow. the harmonica on uh, me and Bobby McGee, and also he played our our uh, he played the thing we did in Tampa Bay. Liam and and Tom and I. The Ballad of Harry Warden as one of the guest yeah. entertainer spots. 
That's, that's on, on that. the Blu-ray. Neil, you got to get on that because you're you're a mean harp player yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm missing. Well, I, I I've been working with a a group of uh, um oh old fashioned hokey folkies from Montreal uh, or from the the. Uh, Canadian folk music scene. These guys are real musicians, and I miss. Uh, I miss. I miss That's the scary. Play. Yeah, yeah. I miss. <laughs> the but it's um, scary when I when do you do you read do you read Neil? Uh, do you read music read, or do you just uh, play by? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Rob's Rob's got to jump in here for a second. Yeah. Jump in, Rob. No, okay. I just, I just want to say that I have to go. So I want to say that I love you all so freaking much. Bob, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Matt and Eric, thank you so much for putting this thing together. Thank and you. I'm so grateful to all the fans that that chimed in on the um, on the uh, what do you call it? The chat rooms. Chat rooms. And I'm so grateful and I can't wait. Until the next time we all get together. Yes. And, and thank you, Eric. Thank you, Matt. Thank, and well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, thank you, Rob. I, I do, do a love... personal one soon, I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get vaccinated, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that would be awesome. Yeah. Then you can all come to my house. Yes, can't wait. We're going to yeah. plan it. It's going to happen. Love you all, and thank That's you all the fans. Right. And I will I will see you soon. Ciao. Yay. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Bye, Rob. Bye. See you, Rob. Bye. I'm gonna say goodbye to oh, we're dropping off. I feel yeah. so, uh, it's so much fun to reconnect with all of you after all these years. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm the biggest fan. Matt thank and you. Eric, thank you for inviting me on this. Um, I'm the one who called Mr. Presner over there and went. Get on Facebook now. <laughs> well, so we we were alluding to it earlier. So, Kathy, before you go, so because of the response uh, of this show, we decided to look at next Sunday of doing a second My Bloody Valentine show with the crew. So we already talked to to George and Bob. Kathy, if you would like to come on next Sunday, I will send you the details. Um, right. We're looking to Rodney. get Rodney and Paul Zaza. And Paul Zaza. Yeah. So yeah. we're, we're going to do a more crew-based show next week because there's so much My Bloody Valentine love, we couldn't contain it to one show. Yay! Oh my God. So. I might be on the comments field on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Expect no less. That's right. <laughs> love it. Oh. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump too. Thank you very much for having yes. me. This is uh, it's quite Thank something. I feel like these are all my 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 parents, uh, my children. I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> one of the two, and uh, and when I grow up, that's yeah. right. When I grow up, I want to be them. <laughs> that's what I think. I Matt, Eric. Thank you very much. You're doing you're good. You're doing God's work because you're keeping us together. And yes. God, you know, she loves to have us all together as as frequently as possible. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to sign off too. Bob, thank you very much for jumping jumping in and jumping on. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> uh, just it's lovely to see everybody again. Please, Neil, we don't see you enough. I know. I missed the last couple of outings. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Matt and Eric, thank you so much. And if, thank you. Uh, if Suzanne is listening in, Suzanne, merci bien again. Thank you so much. It's great that you <laughs> bring us all back together again, all of the usual suspects after all these years. Ciao, Ellen. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye. Just, just one, one, last, one last thing. Like Colombo said, thanks to... Sandy Romer O'Rourke and Justin Adams and Trinidad Burgos and Stacy Lee and Chuck Ryan and Josh Taylor, Dan Grant, Sandy Romero O'Rourke twice, Justin Adams again, uh, Josh Taylor, San Jose, uh, uh, and whoever I missed, I apologize, but you are the backbone of, of what we do. So take yeah. care and thanks for having me. Yeah. Hi, kids. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, I, I want to know did Dave, did Dave Andrews or, um, or 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 um, Barry uh, 
Dominique Jr. make it on? I don't. I didn't. I didn't see, I didn't see if, they, if they. I didn't see any comments. If they were. Yeah. Oh, shout out to Ryan Singleton. Well, here's here's my last thing about, um, like Barry Dominique Jr. was the one that reconnected me in a lot a lot of ways. Uh, an Australian, uh, uh, who is also involved in production and acting from time to time, but a big huge fan. We have fans in the UK. We, uh, I know that Helen and Don Franks and and um, Tom, and I think Paul all did uh, interviews for Hysteria Lives, which is a UK uh, podcast. And I did my interview virtually, but I think Helen did an actual audio one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just remarkable That's to me that we could guys. be number we're, we're three on, on Hysteria Lives, mm -hmm. uh, number seven in Guilty Pleasures in the U.S. A, a few years back. All of these things after uh, what I thought was 20 years of like something that had gone by that was past us. And now to find out there are so few films that get, like George said, that get a remake that was a we're not huge fans of the remake some of us but <laughs> but uh that it endured right it lived and and that people that were not even born when we did it are now absolutely dedicated to it mm -hmm. uh it is so humbling and so yeah. beautiful and I want to just thank all the fans out there, people like people like Brian and Chandra and Justin and Sandy and Bob and and Barry and uh, Dave, who I've just recently met, Dave Andrews from uh, the UK, and all of the people that have kept this film alive. Uh, I mean, I did a lot of stuff, really, but this is what is really injured and is our legacy both personally because of people like Ellen and Peter who are still here and all the others that I love so much and all of these fans that uh, won't let it go. <laughs> you know? Yes, we're so lucky. We're so lucky. But, yeah, my, you know, Bobby, I'll just say this uh, before we leave. Uh, Robbie, Robbie is talking about all these circles, you know, and I do feel like, I don't know, maybe it's crazy, but there's a circle of love here. And so it's nice that it came onto the screen and that the fans felt it, but it's also because we're, we love the fans. You know, we know some of them personally now. And uh, so there's always a circle of light and love and, and that's really nice. Chuck. <laughs> Chuck. Just seeing Thank others you. that I forgot. I'm sorry if I forgot. Oh, Chuck Ryan, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> people who do these cosplays. Chuck, times, yes. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess yeah. it's time to say goodbye, yeah. Well, Peter, did you want to get one final I, I'm, word? I'm thinking it is. We have a hard Peter. time letting go. Some I, I know I do. I'm like, yeah. like uh, kind of hang on, <laughs> you and I haven't no. seen my love. I and think Charlie Lori, wants to say something. Who, who, uh -huh. who wasn't able to make it? Peter. Yeah. Oh, I just missed uh, seeing Lori. You know that was yeah. unfortunate. I don't know. Was it snow that came down on her roof that, that gave the roof in? Or no, no one knows? No. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I just want to say about the water. Fans, issue. You know, when we are going back to one of those questions with how, you know, how do you feel about and, and how did you know that uh, My Bloody Valentine was going to be resurgent into the world again? Uh, I only really uh, got that when we went to New Jersey, I think, for the first time. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the fans were so like, I felt, you know, so wonderful. And I felt so humble that someone would want to have my autograph yeah. on, on my photograph, you know, it just blew me away. And they were going to give me money. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll just sign it. You know, yeah. when little, little kids would go by with their little minor costumes on, I'd be like, don't let my agent see this. Come here. Here, here's a photograph. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 go, 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 go. You know, that just blew my mind to see little mini-me's come up with the headlight and their own little wow. kids. 
<laughs> yeah, that was just you know, wonderful. And so that 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 was uh, the most humbling of all the experiences that I think uh, uh, made me realize that yeah, something big is going on here, and it yeah. keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then with the release of the the new minor um, action figure and and the you know the HD high definition uh, double set, uh, it's just amazing. Amazing, you know, to think that when we were all in theater school and trying to make a, a go of it in show business, we forgot about this film altogether. I mean, I did. And I was oh, yeah. on to the next thing. You're on to the next job. You're just right. trying to make a living. Yeah. So it's like, uh, thank you all. Thank you very well, much. Thank everybody for that. Yeah. I thank have to you. Say, you know, well, nothing more fun than all of us getting together and sitting behind a table and chatting it up. There's nothing more fun than that. So I hope we have many more opportunities to do that. You know, it's sad when 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 we lose cast members, but uh, the rest of us need to stay healthy so that we can get back together and just have fun again. I yep. really love that. Absolutely. I remember Peter uh, the day after that panel in New Jersey, and we finished, and it had finished with Tom taking out his camera and like shooting the the fans at the Q&A saying and getting them all to say, we love, we love my bloody Valentine. <laughs> and <laughs> we're just blown away. And Peter going like, wow, I don't think we missed a step. It's like yesterday. Like we're all <laughs> here and we just, and everything was flooding back and more and more memories have flooded back because of, of the fans and because of we've connected like this. So yeah. thank you. We love you. I love you two guys and all the others that were here and Lori and uh, I hope Paul. we get to do it again soon. Yeah, Carl, where the Paul. hell is he ever show up? I don't know. Paul and Carl, uh, they're, uh, I hope they're well. I know. Uh, and I, Gina. Uh, I, Carl kind of disappeared from the internet after a while. I think it was because of all the political stuff that was going on. But Oh, did Paul disappear from the yeah. internet? I didn't notice. So oh, that's funny. But what about Gina? Yeah, Carl did. Uh, Paul too. Paul is as well. Carl. Carl. I used to chat with him fairly regularly on Facebook, and then uh, and when I went and he has a place. In, he lives in PEI now, and I have. I still own property in PEI. That's oh, where my family exactly. came from. Yeah. And I I almost connected with him, but he was he he gave he 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 sort of decided he wanted to just stay in, in PEI near his daughter and, and drive a bus. So uh, we almost connected, but he was working. I never did connect with him. So, uh, yeah. Cynthia Dale, none of us are in touch with Cynthia Dale. She's, she's not, never, we, we love Cynthia, and I don't know why she's never rejoined us, but she's very busy. Maybe that's why. Well, we should uh, definitely round up again if we can find some of these folks that haven't been as active lately. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was great to see Neil because Neil rarely joins us. It was really nice to see him and lovely yeah. to see George, Bob and Kathy. And nice to see Arden Richman. We should have, maybe we could have pulled her in. Arden pulled met her. me at, Arden, uh, I, so here's the deal. After I did that horrible film, uh crunch which some people actually had seen here i saw posted crunch my uh kinky coaches in the pom 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 pussycats heartbreak high um <laughs> i i had decided rather than just buy a condo and keep working in the box office at centaur which i'd been doing and making some money and getting some equity in my life i decided well i'll just sit back and wait for my next offer and uh, as you know, and uh, it doesn't yet yeah, that preparedness thing, you know, that they were talking about. So I, I, I auditioned for My Bloody Valentine because I remember reading about it in Variety and being excited about it. Um, and then I hadn't heard anything. So I figured, oh, I didn't get anything. And I went and I was tobacco picking in Delhi, Ontario, outside of Tilsonburg, which is a very famous tobacco picking town. So I was, I had a full beard. I was covered in tobacco tar from working. And I come in from the field and this 
farmer and his wife that I had worked for for many years, the wife comes running out and going like, do you want to be a movie star? You're supposed to be at the Montreal airport tomorrow because they want you for my bloody, for the secret, not my bloody Valentine. Nobody knew that. And uh, so I, I got on a bus the next morning. My farmer was like all excited for me. I'd worked for him for like seven years through high school. Every year since I was like 14, I would worked the tobacco fields and then I stopped uh, for three years and then, said, hey, can you help me out? I have no more money. <laughs> so I would get plucked from the tobacco field, one working class environment. The next day, I'm 2,000 feet under the ground, under the sea, watching anthracite fall from the ceiling and in between Keith Knight and Alf Humphreys. And, uh, and then back up to do a reading and and just meet this beautiful cast. And uh, it was uh, Arden Rishpan who met me at the airport with a plane ticket, handed it off to me. I still remember what she, she was wearing this sort of tweed jacket. It's amazing the memories that come back when you're yeah. prompted, you know? Yeah. So all of this is now, maybe my memory's totally fucked and none of this has really <laughs> happened. But... It's a great story, though, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> but, but as in my mind, it did. In my mind, I met Ellen Udy and 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 Laurie Hallier and Peter I Cowper know. and Carl Murat and 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 Tom uh, Kovach and, and all of those people, and it really happened. So yes, you did. decide. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I find really interesting? I do think we should close, but it's interesting that the fans are now greeting the fans. They're like, "Hey, you're here." Hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The circle continues. Yeah, the fans, you know, being grateful yeah. for each other. I love that. So yes. It's Lucy <laughs> Lee, I just talked to Paul today. He was unable to attend. Uh, Sandy Romer, amazing Jim. Uh, well, you're amazing, Sandy. So, <laughs> so guys, I'm gonna. I we have to end somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> we do. Unfortunately. Thank you, Matt. What, Peter? Thank you, Peter. Appreciate you coming so, thank on. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Matt. Yes, thank you, Love Peter. You, thank you, Peter. Thank Give you. Charlie a pat for me, Bye, Peter. Peter. I will. Bye, Peter. Love See you guys. I guess we're leaving. I love you. Thanks so much, Eric Thanks, and Matt. We are going. Thank you. Thanks to everybody who showed up and tried to read everything, and we'll, we'll look through it all, and thank you. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Matt and Eric. See ya. Thank you. Uh, it was a blast. And uh, uh, I just feel like I'm greedy just still hanging on here, but I have to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we appreciate I, you coming I, I, on. I, it's just, thank you. Thank you. Leaving studio. Oh, there's the button. I can't. There. I can never find it. <laughs> 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 you, right. you don't. Here's the thing. You don't. Uh, there, there's a. I'm going to give one last story just because I'm still here. Uh, so this guy in in Cleveland gives me his camera and says, "I want you to take a picture with me." And it's a Polaroid camera, the new Polaroid cameras. <laughs> Uh -huh. And I'm thinking like, oh, this is a viewfinder. And I hit the button. I expose all of his film. I screw up every. <laughs> I'm uh, in front of the camera guy, okay? Don't give me this technical stuff. I'm, I'm horrible at it. But I think I can now leave the studio. So take, take care, everyone. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank so you. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was quite a reunion. Yeah. Whew. That was... Uh, that went exactly how we expected. Well, why don't you go ahead and recap what we've got coming up next Sunday, just in case uh, we didn't get that. Sure. For, for everyone that, that is still here and that may not have heard, uh, next Sunday, the 21st, uh, we are going to be hosting some of the crew of My Bloody Valentine. Bob Pressner, probably Kathy Wolf, definitely George Mahalika, and and I'll work with George. We'll we'll figure out what happened there, so George's yeah. George can stick around and tell all those stories. Uh, and we're hoping to have some more of the crew to more do an in depth dive about the technical side of the filmmaking because I know there were a lot of questions about that, and I know that'll be something that I don't think we've 
gotten to hear elsewhere. So we're going to grab a bunch of the crew uh, next Sunday afternoon, probably mid afternoon for you guys again. Do my more bloody Valentine. Uh-huh. Uh, I think we're going to be doing the same thing we did today, Eric. I think we're just going to be sitting back and, yeah. and kind of watching it all unfold. So yeah, I think we, I had about have to show up maybe 30 questions here. I think I asked maybe four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think there's going to be some, uh, please guys feel free to come back, uh, ask your questions. I'm sorry if we didn't get to them. Uh, definitely want to make sure we we get as much info out there for for you, my bloody Valentine fans, as we can. So Sunday the twenty first, uh, we will share all that information. We'll get it together ASAP and get you guys out and, hey, and welcome and you back. We're, since we're not rushing off here, if, you know, while we're at it, let's go ahead and uh, promo the George A. Romero Foundation dot org. Uh, please, if you haven't stopped by there, we've got a new website design. Uh, we've got. Um, all sorts of things being populated over there. If you can, mm -hmm. you know, if you haven't already, please uh, get by and check it out and see what we're yep, up Yep, sign to. up for the newsletter. It comes out quarterly with lots of new info. Absolutely. And on that same token, also be sure to check out our Patreon page uh, where there's all sorts of levels of membership uh, from $5 on up. So, uh, or actually $3 on up. So give that a look, and we're we're updating content all the time, and we've got a lot more planned for the future. So yep. please check out Patreon. Yep. Yep. And we have a full slate of shows coming in mm -hmm. March. I think we have Eric three shows. Um, That's right. We're 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 going to get all that together and get that out for you guys. There's there's going to be some shows in in March that I think you guys are really going to love, and we are planning out. April, May, we got a lot of lot of stuff on deck for you guys. So uh -huh. we really do appreciate you guys joining in with us all the time. Thank you guys so much for for interacting and commenting. We really do appreciate the time you give us and the attention. And as you could see, the, the cast of My Bloody Valentine, we we couldn't get enough of them. They couldn't get enough of you guys. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. seriously, thank you guys very much for everything. Uh, until next Sunday, uh, where we have, as Matt says, more, my, more bloody Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> more my bloody Valentine. Uh, I am Eric. And I'm Matt. And this has been the Garth Network.